Welcome back, everybody. This is episode 181 of the Hop Nation USA podcast. I am one of your hosts, Adam. Back to talk about beers and some other things. Of course, we'll get into that later. With me is Steve. You really are just writing this. I'm going to NPR it up because I was mean a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. You, you, you got to spice it up. This is our Stouts Giving Extravaganza. So you Give the people a little juice in their ass. Ew. Yeah. First of all, we don't <laughs> advocate butt chugging. No. Yes. Bow the record. <laughs> Please don't do that. Boof it. Who cares? No. 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 We refuse to recognize boofing in 2020. It's 2020. Do whatever you want. There are no laws. That is not a, a treat. So there are we will more not be laws. doing that. Yeah. There are more <laughs> restrictions now. Uh, so that's me. Steve is here as well. Yeah. After you yelled at me, I don't care if he does or not. He means nothing to me. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> that went dark real fast. <laughs> what did I walk into? <laughs> also, we know you're lying. Yes. That's true. That's also yeah. true. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't bother me because I know he's just a liar. Full of shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the lies. And uh, as you can also hear, we have some guests with us. It is a gathering of the long hairs today. We have Casey back. Hello. Hello. You have no room to talk about long hair. That's why with all of us are long hairs. That's why, that's why I said it. We're all a bunch of conditioner using people what kind of conditioner you guys use i don't whatever's in the shower oh whatever i, I bought at my salon oh. i think suave is in there and i'm not i'm, not, called, I'm a got, tresemme man myself oh, oh okay Fancy. i think it's called heavenly it's Ooh. from my salon I right, we'll, we'll swap notes later on <laughs> steve hair with your pinkies out yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely <laughs> am <laughs> bougie steve what do you use i didn't condition my hair today i conditioned my beard though oh, all right. oh that's important and i also is, believe it's suave Excellent. Yeah. Because 2020 is now the year of the treat when it comes to beer. We're saying that it's time for the biggest treat of all, stouts. It's stouts giving. It's stouts giving, Adam. It's stouts giving. Adam, That's right. I'm going to need like a little more excitement over stouts giving from you for this episode. Yeah, your tone of voice is very Rosemary on YEP right now. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. We need emotion. Bump it up a skosh. Emote. <laughs> you want a little bit of this? All right. No, I'm not going to do that. You I'm put bad. your... <laughs> You were so close. You put you <laughs> put your glasses cusp. on and you grew your hair out long and now you're really, really looking like you donate to certain right. vegetable farms. <laughs> and I drive an 08 Prius. Yeah. Please, Adam, tell us, which is your favorite farmer's market in the Pittsburgh area? Well, you see, it all depends on what day of the week you're talking about. How much of your wardrobe is hemp? <laughs> <laughs> tell a rope a call. <laughs> Look, just be t because Woody Harrelson and I are on a yeah, first name basis. Yeah, you have to be old to get that reference. <laughs> Don't wow, mean nothing. Tellerofa was so good. You're welcome. Oh, my. Thank you. I'm old. Uh, <laughs> we're all old. That's all there is to it. And we can model that over our first beer that we're going to have on the show for Stouts Giving. Much excitement given Ugh, is... Weak effort. That's fine. We're working on it. <laughs> that's right. Is the peanut butter hazelnut caramel chocolate cake stout. Can you say that one more time? Because I don't think the, I got everything. The peanut butter hazelnut caramel chocolate cake stout. Boom. By Hoppin' Frog out of the Rubber City, Akron, Ohio. Is that what that is? The Rubber City? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they made tires. Yeah. Good years there. Firestone. They're minor league is baseball. Is that where the football hall famous? Uh, no, Can. that's Kenton. That's, oh. that's one town down. Uh, potato, potato. They're, uh, they're <laughs> Ohio, Ohio. It's Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that is a lot of the cuisine there. If it's yeah. not, <laughs> if it's not Cleveland or Columbus, I don't know. No or offense, sorry. Cincinnati. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. Oh, all right. Cincinnati is a blip on the way to Indianapolis. It's true. Kentucky. <laughs> That's also Kentucky. true. Or Kentucky. <laughs> but yes, the uh, minor league baseball team in Akron is the Rubber Ducks. In case you were interested in such things. Yeah. Well, now I'm a fan. Colloquially yeah. known as the Rubbies. No. Nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens in the parking lot. <laughs> Uh, 8% ABV is what they're claiming this little nugget comes from. Their description is, The rich, decadent character of this gourmet cake flavored stout will fill your senses with friendly, familiar flavors and aromas of yesteryear. Take a trip back in time and enjoy all the memories that our peanut butter hazelnut caramel chocolate cake stout will invoke. Please drink responsibly. Boom. Wow. Okay, so real question. Have you guys had anything with this 
combination of flavors, food or candy wise? Because I'm not no. sure that I have. I don't have a basis of comparison for this. No, they just went in, checked a bunch of boxes. Like, no, that makes sense. Okay. I believe I have made a Nutella peanut butter sandwich in the past. Mm-hmm. That's legit. Okay. That's legit. So then you just add some caramel sauce. Right. Okay. And then cake rather yeah. than white <laughs> bread. Right. <laughs> That's oh. about as close as I can get you, though. <laughs> um, have you? No, I can't even think of any time I would have had peanut butter with hazelnut. Yeah. Right. This is this is the fancy bakery. <laughs> right. Exactly. This, this isn't the Walmart. No, <laughs> I have a friend who lives in Ohio who owns a bakery. We could talk to her about making this. Uh, yeah. I would like that. Let's get this poured up because I do like that that combination of of things that got listed here. That all makes sense that it would go together. But I've never had any of it all together at right. the same time. Yeah. It's all flavors of brown. So yes, yes. <laughs> let's try. I feel like this is one of those times where even if we hit like two out of three, I'm going to be pleased. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, with this poured out, uh, I need to drink it. I can smell it. Yep. It smells super good. Does I get a lot of uh, I'll say peanut butter. I get, I get the caramel. The what? The caramel. Caramel. The caramel. Is that one of them? I'm getting yeah, it is the caramel more than <laughs> oh, anything. Oh, caramel. I don't live in Indiana, so I can say caramel because it's not a town here. Caramel. I say caramel. <laughs> Nobody this says is caramel. Like, it's, exactly. It's, that makes me unique. <laughs> it smells like a candle. Okay, yeah, and like, in a good way, yes. yeah. Yeah, like, you know, like the candles that like make you salivate, like you don't want to light them in your house because it smells so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is that. Yeah, like, this is Yankee Candle Extra. Yes, <laughs> like sixty percent of Bath and Body Works candles. Uh, yeah, I like those candles. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Usually, get the mustier, mustier, musky, or not musty. You don't want a musty candle. No, you don't, want that a musty. Awful. <laughs> don't get a musty candle. Ooh, a musty candle. Yeah, mostly. I love the caramel. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm going oh in. my goodness! I'm going, I'm going in. Hmm. I'm not getting peanut butter. I am not either. I am getting hazelnut. Yes. Oh wait, oh. a little bit of peanut butter back here. You know, getting the hazelnut, getting the the caramel or caramel or cramel or cramel. If you're a weirdo, caramel. Uh, so I just want to walk back just a second on this beer. There was really no reason to talk about the look of it. Yeah, no, it was a style. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We did skip that. We did. But it it smelled and tasted so good. I just got excited. You really got excited over there. You really wanted to smell it like the second we poured it out. Yeah, it it was stinking everywhere. (laughs) Stinking (laughs) everywhere. everywhere. Not in a bad way. I I will say. The the head seemed to like just completely dissipate really quickly. Mine mm-hmm. stuck around a little bit actually. Yeah. yeah, and if you poured it really poorly, you got some head, but it, it poured it, it went poorly. Away. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it uh, it's a good beer. I mean, it's not gonna knock your socks off, but it's a good beer. I'm getting an aftertaste, and I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure either. I'm <laughs> thinking it's a little bit of hazelnut. That okay. is, it's coming through just a little bit. That's what I'm getting on uh, the half end. A little bit acrid. Like, it's, just a little acrid. Yeah. 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 But That's it's a good like, way of putting it. Like hazelnut if you're eating the nut. Not exactly. Like, not like and Nutella. Right. Yes. It's yeah. more it's the nut itself. genuine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, it's the actual nut. And... That's fine, and I guess the comparison we could make is to that RAR ten layer yes. stout cake thing where there was we had the peanut butter version of that. We did. That one wasn't quite as accurate as this one. Right. So this is something you're gonna drink in place of dessert and not with dessert. Right. I Correct. think that would be way overwhelming. Yes. Yeah, having a bunch of these in a row yeah. is That's just yeah. bad news bears. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The only thing I would say it's is, sad drinking. <laughs> <laughs> is if you had like maybe a mini cupcake that somehow captured some of this flavor, like if it was a chocolate peanut butter, like mini cupcake or mm-hmm. like a chocolate hazelnut or like a maybe a vanilla with like a, a sea salt caramel to like Ooh. try to bring out some of those more hidden like flavors mm-hmm. that but like a mini one, like the one biter. That would all like to accentuate. The, I like the idea the of the little thirty six pack in the back mm-hmm. of Sam's Club. Yeah. <laughs> They're like half inch thick. But I, I like the idea of the sea salt caramel or cramel Cramble. being being eaten in conjunction with this beer. I think that would work really well. Yeah, getting a mental image of a camel every time you guys say that. <laughs> cramel. <laughs> it's the cramel camel. <laughs> the cramel camel. Cramel Joe. Yeah, I'm starting a new holiday. <laughs> I actually had a friend uh, when I lived in Indianapolis named Ramel, and I would call it, it was R-A-M-E-L. It's like, so it's a ramel. Ram, and I would call him Ramel the Camel. Nice. He didn't like that. He was actually really okay with it. He thought it was funny. My name's Ramel the Camel. <laughs> There's a chance he said that to me once. 
Nice. What do you say we get in some news, them, them notes, and some neats? Yeah, sure. Nom, sure. Nom, nom, All right. Nom, so uh, we're recording this a lot earlier than we usually do. So we are not as nearly up to date as what uh, I assume all of our listeners are accustomed to. That's right. So we're going to focus mostly on one story this week. I actually have another one. You have another one? I do actually well, have another one. Well, if it's a feel-good story, then we'll get to it at the end. It <laughs> is. I didn't even it look is. because I, of I our one story. Because of the one story, yeah. is just like so like, holy Jesus, fuck. Yeah. yeah. I just didn't even look for another we're, one. We're going we're gonna to lift people up after this, All right, this well then, story. We'll get to that story after this story. Because this story, we get to do some true crime. Hooray! Hooray! We're finally a true crime podcast, That's you guys. Right. I <laughs> feel like I've been on a lot of the true crime episodes. Right? I feel yeah. like that. I wonder if they, like, they bring us on because they know how much we love true crime. No, I think it's the other way around. I think people are just murdering people well, or scamming that. people when they know we're coming on the show. Yeah, maybe that too. Yeah. yeah. Well, this this story has both. Odd certainty. Murder and scam. Yes. Yay! So if you've been paying any attention to the beer news of the world and even just regular news because it is a murder case, there was a brewery owner who killed somebody. (sighs) And as far as we know, outside of like the 1800s when shit was wild and pre 1800s, this is one of the only cases we can think of. Yeah. That this has happened. There's probably more that we haven't heard of just like the breweries weren't big enough or whatever, but Yeah, this is a pretty high-profile case, and it is because Keith Ashley allegedly... Thank you for adding that in. Yeah, protect my own ass. That's right. (laughs) Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly has murdered a financial investor as well as allegedly running a Ponzi-like scheme and bilking lots of people out of money. Yes, it was in the millions of dollars, wasn't it? At this point, they've registered about $1.1 million. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. <laughs> but the, the the investigation has dated all the way back to 2013. Oh, hell. Yeah, so they're saying the Ponzi scheme was run from about 2013 to this year. Mm-hmm. So, wow. yeah, yeah, a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, this predates the actual brewery that he was a, a membership owner of, which is Nine Band Brewing out of Allen, Texas. It's about 30 minutes north of Dallas. They have a huge high school football stadium. Do they? They do. I don't I know why a, you know that. I why don't either. Why would he know that? Yeah, I don't know. To Adam. Sorry. He, I don't know. He's just full of sport. Why the hell does he know Akron's baseball team is the Rubbies? You know, it's... Well, first of all, no. <laughs> we have to stop that. <laughs> we kibosh that now. That's not a thing. We will not Robert make it Ducks. a thing. I'll make it. You cannot will it into existence. Crammel and the Rubbies. <laughs> which, which is worse, Rubbies or Rubbers? Well, the rubbers. I mean, that's that's too on the nose. What rubbies? Yeah, but you can always say the rubbers are like galoshes. No rubbies on the nose. Sure, if you're in like Canada or Britain. Okay. Yeah. Are they wellies in Britain? <laughs> I they think are. they're wellies too, yeah. yeah. Anyways, back to the murder. Allegedly. <laughs> back to the... No, no, it was a murder. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> murder mystery. Yeah. So. <laughs> Let's jump back to the year 2014 when the Nine Band Brewery opens. We mentioned how that uh, the, the scam has been supposedly running from 2013. That means 2014, we're looking at the brewery being funded by some scam money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 2014, the partnership of Keith Ashley, who is the alleged murderer and scammer, partners with a friend, Jack Sparks, and they decide to open a nine-band brewery in Allen, Texas. Ashley comes from a background of financial... Uh, he, he was a financial investor in another brewery called Franconia Brewing, Okay. So that was my question was how did he get involved with the brewery in the first place if his personal history is of being a nurse? Right. Yeah. So Keith Ashley is a nurse, but he's also a financial investor and planner, but he's also a brewery owner. He's a, he, he's a lot of things. It's too Not many, to say it's him. Too many hats. Right. Not to say it's him, but you tend to find that people who are of a misgiving nature, <laughs> a scumbag nature, lot of things. Yeah, they <laughs> try to put their fingers in a lot of pies. <laughs> Ew. Not saying that Ew. it's not saying that he is, is pie. that way. Alleged pies. Alleged pies. <laughs> but uh, yeah, 
Wouldn't you say the pies existed? It's just allegedly his fingers. Right. It's allegedly his fingers. He's an alleged scumbag. <laughs> He's an alleged scumbag and sociopath. I'm comfortable with saying he is a confirmed scumbag. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to be guilty of the murder to be a scumbag. Okay, fair this enough. This is true. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. So he, uh, he comes from that background of investing in the Franconia Brewing Company. Uh, they're still around. So oh, right. he didn't destroy them. That's good. In any way, there is not a history of that happening. But also, just kind of looking at their website, it's definitely a brewery that's from 2007 that never left 2007. Understood. Oh. Understood. Yeah. Uh, he paired with Jack Sparks, as I've mentioned. And Jack Sparks has an interesting little touch history with Pennsylvania. All right. In that he first became interested in homebrewing when he went to Penn State. Oh, all right. Yeah. I've heard of that place. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in 1988, he actually won a silver medal at GABF. Oh. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. So He's he, got clout. Yeah, has a little clout for back then. <clears throat> and obviously, Ashley saw a, uh, a partnership and possibility in opening a brewery. He also saw that possibility in opening a brewery in Allen, Texas, because there were no current breweries. Which I find very surprising. Yeah. What year? Uh, 2014. Really? Yeah. So, you know, well, again, it's 30 minutes north of yeah, Dallas. Yeah, so probably most of the, the hubbub is going to be in Dallas-Fort Worth area, so mm-hmm. they're yeah. probably nothing. Right. Uh, I believe that Franconia Brewing Company, though, was uh, merely like 30 minutes west in uh, McKinney, Texas, though. So it was very close. He just saw, probably driven through there. He just saw another Texas town that could have used a brewery. Hmm. Uh, with that, though, he actually garnered money from the Economic Development Corporation, which is kind of like a chamber of commerce. Oh, all right. But it's more about investing in oh, startups. So he started off the legal way? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. Yeah, he started off the legal way and actually was able to get the Economic Development Corps to invest $75,000 into helping open the brewery. Damn. That'd be yeah. nice. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um and then where did the rest of the money come from? Well, the rest of the money, I, it's hard to tell where it all came from. Uh, they're still just investigating everybody he may have touched. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. But everybody that he brought back money to the from. Rubies. Yeah, back to the release. <laughs> We're not making this a thing. No. Stop <laughs> encouraging him. <laughs> Robbie's going to be a thing, not in reference to the baseball team. <laughs> I'm taking a lot of this from the DallasNews.com report when they were, you know, trying to announce the brewery opening. And in that interview, he said himself that he is a very family-oriented individual. Mm -hmm. And he needed to feel that from the town before he was willing to put a brewery in a town. Mm -hmm. Does he have a family? He does. Okay. Yes. Unfortunately, yes, he did ruin his own family on top of somebody else's family. So, allegedly. (laughs) Thank you. Also, in that interview in 2014 they had he had lofty goals and that he wanted to produce 40 percent of the volume that shiner did wow wow all right within the next five years oh well, that's lofty yeah so in five years shiner's he's, is national i know <laughs> <laughs> he they, okay he specifically mentioned that he wanted to have distribution reach oregon and pennsylvania Wow. Nobody ever grows that fast and survives. Nobody grows that fast and survives, and especially nobody grows as fast as they do uh, under common legal ways. Normal circumstances. Normal circumstances, yes. Okay. Uh, he, they did not reach that, obviously, because I 2019... I never heard of them until yeah, now. <laughs> exactly. 2019 came and went, and we did not have any uh, nine band in the... Uh, in our commonwealth. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's possible not to like throw Jack Sparks under the bus or anything, but a lot of the things I read on Reddit threads were not very focused on Keith Ashley, but focused on just how the brewery in general was not that good. Oh, and uh, Uh. as of right now, all of their Instagram, Facebook and website, they're all down. That makes sense. Yes. The brewery still operating. I don't think it is. Bummer. Yeah. Wow. Uh, if you I use, I feel for the brewer that got on that ship. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel bad. I feel bad for him too. But if you use the Wayback Machine, you can look at previous versions of the uh, website, mm-hmm. and basically just like reading their beer list, 
it's it's all like marketed to hell. Oh. oh, yeah. As in the beers are created to try to find a niche rather than try to flex the capabilities of the brewer. Uh, that and more that it's also just like the naming conventions and everything. They have no personality to them. I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, even that's even something I saw somebody comment on Reddit of just like when they asked the brewer, why was such and such a beer named this? Mm hmm. He said it's because a marketing company told me. <laughs> oh, gross. Yeah. Oh. oh. So their beers include things like the Cactus Cat Kolsch, the 28th State Stout, and probably one of the worst named beers I've ever heard, the Toad Choker Barley Ew. Wine. Oh. Ew. Ew. Yeah, that just sounds not good. That gives horrible <laughs> mental imagery. You don't have to have an outstanding name if you have an outstanding no. product. I think aberration right. is proof of that. Yeah. It's that breakfast cereal, ale, version 1.1, version 1.2, 1. 1. 1. Yeah. 1. 1. yeah. etc. But that also speaks to the overall brand of abjuration because they have a chemistry theme. Yeah. And they also want you mm. to brew their versions right. as well. Yeah. It's like it's all very chemistry and working themed. So, yeah, uh, this is just like every beer name I saw was like two words and then the beer style. It sounds very much like you would find at like BJ's Pizza. Right. Yeah. Or uh, Gordon Beersh, I guess, would be another one. Mm -hmm. Very. Yeah, you're right. Very corporate. Right. It was very corporate. The one way the Nine Band uh, Brewery did expand, though, was into the Osage Tribe Casinos. Oh, in no. Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. So I'm not entirely sure how they came about this partnership, but I'm sure Keith Ashley sold himself as well as assets that he didn't actually have. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm about to get so mad. <laughs> he, Continue. He invested in, uh, there was a new casino being opened in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So the Osage tribe has a number of casinos throughout Oklahoma. Shocking. And, uh, 2018, they were opening a new one that was also going to include a second location of the Nine Band Brewery. All right. To the point that they even put in a 20-barrel system mm. <sighs> to run the brewery hmm. from the casino, mm -hmm. and then that would give the uh, that would give the Osage Tribe essentially the Oklahoma distribution rights. Ah. ah. Okay. So so it, it, it's not a full. It didn't seem like a full-on scam. I think there may have been more scam on the end of him raising the funds to invest in the casino because the casino was like a hundred sixty million dollar investment. Oh for, my, that's not small potatoes at all, right? No, but never. I mean, the Osage Tribe already has money from their right. other casinos, so mm -hmm. that's yeah. You know, so he may have saw an opportunity to buy an entertainment venue. Like I just found out, there's a casino in Pittsburgh on the outskirts of Pittsburgh. What? Yeah, that, that, that's just opening. Yeah. Uh, I want to say Isn't it's... Isn't it the Westmoreland Mall? It's like, yeah, yeah, it's like live Pittsburgh Casino yeah. or whatever. And Guy Fieri's putting in some flavor town. Yeah, yeah. he is. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like that. I'm sure Guy Fieri paid a little bit of money to reserve a space to have a flavor town. Same thing applies here. So Same I've thing had here. his stuff on cruise ships, and it's actually pretty good. I'm sure it's fine. I'm not going to hate on Guy Fieri. <laughs> Guy Fieri has had, it, had people yell at him for far too long. The, uh, the casino, though had decided earlier this year that they were going to end the partnership with Nine Band. Did they say why? That the brand was not very representative of their people coming into the casino, which is interesting because we already talked about how it's just very bland and boring to begin with. Mm -hmm. yeah, it like was super did, corporate. Did yeah. Nobody uh did nobody like sample the product before they signed on for this? I I'm sure they sampled the product. It's just that the brewery wasn't selling. So yeah. I, I guess people just in general didn't like it. So yeah, they've this, they decided earlier this year mm -hmm. to end the partnership and it was going to dissolve December 31st this year. Yeah. Wow. They let yeah. that go on for too long. Well, they, I mean, Hey, they kind of dodged a bullet cause they had already decided to. that <laughs> might be a poor turn of phrase. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why? He didn't dodge the bullet. Ah, <laughs> The casino just because just because there's a bullet doesn't mean it was dodged. <laughs> casino did. <laughs> the casino dodged a bullet. But yeah, they they dodged a bullet by deciding to end that partnership before things really got haywire. And that uh, starts in fe February nineteenth of this year, when allegedly allegedly Keith Ashley went to the home of one of his clients 
Oh, uh, Jim Segan. We don't need to say allegedly on this one. Well, no, he definitely was at his home. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he went to the home of Jim Segan, and later that day, Jim Segan's wife, Dita, found him dead in their home. She found her husband dead mm-hmm. of an apparent suicide gunshot wound to the head. Allegedly. However. Suicide. However, yes. <laughs> However. Comma. There were a lot of glaring problems with this alleged suicide. Mm -hmm. First and foremost... Kurt Cobain. Yeah, she found her husband (laughs) with a gun in his left hand sitting on his left leg, and he was Mm right-handed. Step one. Step one. Kurt Cobain. Mm -hmm. Step two, they didn't own a gun. <laughs> that would raise a few eyebrows. I'll admit that. Yes. Step three, she found a suicide note next to the body. Typed. Typed. Of not course. Handwritten. Of course. And the last line of said suicide note said, My last friend Keith will help you with Keith Ashley's phone number written. Ah, uh-huh. <laughs> huh. This is not suspicious at all. Nope. And then once uh, we also mentioned that he was caught on the nest. Or the doorbell yeah. camera, right. whatever yeah. it was. So that's why it's not alleged that he was there. Yeah, it's and not this, alleged he was there. And this there. is he my bone there. of contention with a nine-month investigation, yeah. is that the the doorbell caught him coming to the house, recorded it. 45 minutes later, a loud noise, which they later identified as a gunshot. Right. <laughs> and then recorded him leaving. This took y'all nine months? Nine fucking months to put that together? Well, they were, they were building the other case as well at the same time. I'm just saying, Texas yeah. Walker <laughs> Ranger would be pissed. <laughs> yeah. It's not good detective work. It's not good detective work, but at the same time, if he's not going anywhere. Right. I mean, yeah. it could have been something where they already had everything wrapped up, and yeah. then they said, well, we got bigger fish. We got to take care of like as we well. We can hold him on murder while right. investigating it's the fair, other stuff. Fair, he doesn't true. have to be tried for right. everything all at once. But yeah. I'm just saying that you know the murder investigation could have been wrapped up by you know middle of March. Yeah, and then they said, hold on. Yeah, we're gonna get him on this anyways. <laughs> we're gonna get him on a whole bunch of things, but goodness. And they did. Uh, yes. But also other problems with the suicide. After the alleged suicide, he came back and Keith Ashley did. He came back and. Got the phone that uh, that Jim Segan owned mm-hmm. uh, and deleted all the messages. In front of his wife. Yeah. What? <laughs> deleted all the messages they had shared together. Oh, good Lord. And then wired himself $20,000 <laughs> from a bank account. <laughs> An idiot. This is after he had already al- allegedly taken Jim Segan for $700,000 in different investments. The final piece of the puzzle that uh, would later be discovered in autopsy is that Jim Segan was found to have edomidate. What is edomidate? It is a general anesthetic that you will not find usually outside of a hospital unless you deal drugs, which Jim Segan did not do. <laughs> right, but if you are perhaps a nurse, right, if you, you happen to be a registered <laughs> If you happen to be a registered nurse and would know what edomidate would do, because I wouldn't until I just read what edomidate right. does. <laughs> yeah, even like the police said that they did they had never heard of it. This is not something they encounter on the regular. Right. right. That uh, yeah. That raises all. Oh, did you the mention flags. the life insurance policy? I didn't mention the life insurance policy. <laughs> Yeah, so something like 20 days before he murdered this guy, he changed his beneficiary on his life insurance policy. Like, he had taken policies out on this guy's life. Oh, jeez. For, to for him, yeah. <laughs> originally, the wife was the beneficiary, and then like 20 days before murdering him, allegedly murdering Thank him, you. he changed the beneficiary and forged his signature and made himself the beneficiary, which... How? To the tune of like $2 million. Yes. Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Yeah, this guy. What a mess. This guy is a shitty criminal. <laughs> yeah. Like this shows like he just, might have been a good criminal. So that's okay. So what I read was he had from investors got not quite or just over one point four million. Mm. He had at some point returned about eighty grand to these people. Right. You're already over a million up. Just walk away. Why would you do this stunt? You were getting away with it. See, that's what I'm not sure. Like, we mentioned the Osage tribe was ending it with the brewery. Mm-hmm. 
So that would make sense as something that would stress somebody out as a yeah. need to like recoup funds quickly. So he's panicking. Right. Okay. But that didn't happen until after he'd already oh. Like, that happened in the summer when they decided that, unless they maybe decided earlier. And they just wasn't announced until right. this summer. Yeah. Maybe. So that might have triggered him, but, yeah, it's hard to... It could a, even be the behind the scenes of, well, he's pushing for a contract for continuity, and they're mm-hmm. holding off on signing, and that Right. Maybe he. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe he didn't meet expectations or funds. Shocking. And knew... Right. Yeah. Big, big shock. Big right. shock. Yeah, he knew it was coming down the pipeline that he needed money quick, hmm. so... <clears throat> Again, I still don't think that makes him a good criminal because obviously he's targeting old people and you can bilk them out of money. It happens all the time. And My as long grandmother as you, did not fall for one this week. I was very good proud for her. of her. Good yeah. for her. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent news. She did not believe Publisher Clearinghouse was going to give her $8 million if she just gave them her credit card and paid them. <laughs> oh, boy. Yes. Good, good job, Graham. If you, this is a PSA real quick. Big moment. If you have olds in your life... Teach them to stop picking up the phone. <laughs> if you don't recognize the number, let it go to the machine. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, he it, it, it doesn't sound like a good criminal because all you have to do, like you said, he gave back like 80000 at some point. Mm-hmm. If you have a concrete thing like a brewery to show people and then you can give back a little bit of money, I think a lot of people out of the kindness of their hearts will let you go. But it's not like a total Ponzi scheme where you're not seeing any investments Right. It's just like a, a shitty Ponzi scheme where you're seeing money go to something, but you're not quite sure where it's all going. Yeah. And I mean, clearly he was able to keep people on the hook. If he gave 80 grand back to mm-hmm. investors at some point, then he was giving them something to keep right. them on the hook. Right. Oh, yeah. We did really well this quarter. Here's five grand. <laughs> yeah. So, and then obviously he, the, Jim Segan was the person he took advantage of the most. It seems. And it said they were friends beforehand. Yeah. How do you do that to a friend? Mental illness or some shit, man. How do you not know your friend is not left-handed? I know Adam's left-handed. I make fun of him for it all the time. (laughs) It's just because he's jealous. (laughs) Nope. I have no need to smear all my pen. You don't like playing (laughs) Silver Surfer whenever you write with pencil? I don't make scuffs. (laughs) You don't have to, you don't like looking back at your notes and trying to remember what you actually wrote because everything got smeared. You don't enjoy that? These are both really weird fluxes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like strange. But no, that's a very valid point. I I am in general aware of who is left-handed in my life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't necessarily know. I can't confirm everybody who's right-handed, but I just know who's (laughs) left-handed. Everyone else is right-handed. Exactly. (laughs) That's because of the Do you have special scissors in the house? You left handed. <laughs> no leftatorium. Do you have a high <laughs> propensity for getting injured using right handed objects? You might be a left handed person. <laughs> so, yeah, in the end, it uh, seems like Keith Ashley is going to go away for a long, long time. But uh, he, he was arrested first for the fraud chain. <laughs> That's the other thing is like, as Katie pointed out, like nine months. Nine mm-hmm. months. But he was also arrested first on the fraud. Yeah. I don't and then that. arrested a week later on the uh, murder. Rearrested. Yeah. I wonder if that was the, the reasoning. Like maybe he knew the fraud arrest was coming and he needed a quick make a ton of money so I can get the fuck out of here plan. Ooh. Well, no, no. Well, no, because oh. no, he was arrested for fraud like just two weeks ago. Yeah. But like, yeah, he didn't. He wouldn't make the he he did the murder like at the beginning of the year, but maybe he caught wind that there was a fraud investigation happening maybe starting late last year. Yeah. Okay, that's possible. When he tried right. to collect on the okay. on mm-hmm. the um on the life insurance is probably what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if he didn't collect on the life insurance, then he didn't get his get the fuck out of Dodge money. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It should have just gone to Mexico. Just thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all yeah, it's all possible. He lives it's... in Texas. How the fuck is he going to get to Mexico? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Adam, there's a wall in the way. <laughs> Use your head. You seen that wall? That wall is strong as hell. <laughs> I've seen it got knocked over by some winds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that really happened. It's as strong though. as the power lines in Beaver Candy. <laughs> uh, those are stronger. <laughs> they are. Well, that is a messed up situation. I look forward to the Netflix documentary. That yes. will be happening <laughs> without podcast. a doubt. Yes. How? Yes. I mean, yes. We jumped on it because obviously last podcast on the left will do it first. But 
<laughs> we got to beat them to the table. And That's then, right. <laughs> bragging rights. It's all about bragging rights. We got to beat Netflix to the table. And before they cast Ray the Yoda. <laughs> If you've seen pictures of this Keith Ashley guy, I don't know how you trusted him. He had fucking psycho eyes. All right, then. As a person with psycho eyes, I get it. You don't have <laughs> psycho eyes. I, you don't see it when I don't have my glasses on. Actually, the glasses off just make your eyes kinder. Aww. Now you have kind eyes. Because I got the Aww. I got. I don't like it. It's bag. not you. Put the glasses back on. I get these deep <laughs> bags under my eyes. That's called aging. Welcome to your 30s. It's a blast. Well, I've had them <laughs> since I was 18, so I don't look like I sleep. Psycho eyes is like, I don't. like Gary Busey, and you gotta like like bug out like like an, if you sneeze really hard, one of them might pop out. <laughs> Those are pug eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't have psycho eyes, Steve. Wired cocaine eyes all the time. Well, this guy, I felt he does because I felt his eyes were similar to mine in that they were very deep and purple around their rims and just constantly narrowed. And he doesn't look, there's no picture of him that he doesn't look dangerous. In. All right, then. <laughs> I do not, I would not trust this person. <laughs> <laughs> that is fair. Uh, okay, yeah. now he legit has crazy eyes. Yeah, uh, now granted, because we're just looking at a mug shot here. Mug shots are not exactly the most flattering of shots. Well, True. He, his bags are puffy bags. His bags are puffy. Mine aren't puffy. They're, my eyes are just very, very sunken. We'll see, we'll see who they cast. you just randomly showed me a picture of this guy, oh, I see. and you're like... Hey, do you think he would have murdered someone? I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I see just, it. <laughs> do you trust this yes. person? No, I don't trust that person. Do you want to give that person money? Absolutely not. I don't want to give anybody money. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's just because you're a skin flint. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh my goodness! No, All right. no, even even in happy pictures, he's still got cray cray. Yeah. This is like oh, this yeah. is clearly a professional picture taken. Yeah. Yeah. It's so de- like that something. It's a mischievous smile. There's like a weird glint in his eye that's like, is that him? I'm too? hiding something. Keith Ashley and Kaylee Kelly bringing Oktoberfest to Frisco, mm. which is also near like McKinney and yeah. all of that. Mm. North of Dallas. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, he cray. Yeah. He for show cray. Oh, but all right. So all that right. was um. There you go. That was a. Uh, well, sure. wasn't a whirlwind. It wasn't sadder. I mean, I'm sure it is for the the families of the people that this guy's fucked over and or potentially murdered. But like that didn't bring me down. That just left me with a lot of questions. Yeah. So Adam, hopefully your uplifting story is not filled with so many questions. (laughs) Yes. And I'll go through this real quick. Something more firm because we definitely uh, dove into that one uh, a lot. So this will be fairly quick, but uh, this comes from Bob Betts. Our friend over at the Post Gazette, yeah. our only friend at the Post Gazette, but uh, he wrote an article uh, earlier when this airs. It'll be last week uh, about the PLCB, the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board. Heard uh, of them? Heard of them? Uh, dispersing over two million dollars in grants for 2021 oh. uh, to organizations throughout Pennsylvania to help promote alcoholic beverages and whatnot. Hmm. And there are a few that are coming to the Pittsburgh area that I wanted to highlight a little bit. Cracker Barrel. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Cracker Barrel is getting booze in some places, though. I really? don't. I don't know that we're one of them, but that's happening. Yeah, I don't want to get into Cracker Barrel. It was bad enough we had to talk about Panera a couple weeks ago. But Ew, the, the first Panera one I wanted to talk about was waffles. CNC Malt. Oh, oh in good Butler. for them. Yeah, CNC, good for Brendan. CNC Malt is uh, getting a grant of about $138,000. Are you just going to put uh, business on blast like that? <laughs> no, that's a good thing. This is a good thing. They are building businesses. Now his friends are going to hit him up for money. No, because it is going directly into equipment for malt and hop storage. Or, ooh. Like a uh, a grain. A not, silo? It's a not silo. a silo, <laughs> but it's, it's a, a bin. silo. A bin, yes. It is a grain bin and uh, for temperature-controlled hop storage. Uh, the reasoning behind this is to help to stabilize uh, the redistribution of ingredients throughout Pennsylvania to the Pennsylvania breweries. Uh, obviously, things have been uh, ravaged because of everything that is 2020. But the PLCB is helping out CNC to help out the local breweries. That's awesome. Yes, That's by by uh, being able to maintain more ingredients at hand so the brewers can get at them and use them and keep the beer flowing. And use more local ingredients. And use more local ingredients, which we on the show are obviously fans of. And mm-hmm. those local ingredients are harvested from local farms. It's a big agriculture. <laughs> Agri- Agri- whatever that Agri- fucking word. <laughs> it's a good thing. The big A word. Yes. Yes. Uh, in addition to that, 
Uh, $75,000 has been allocated to Drinking Part- Partners LLC uh, mm-hmm. to help uh, support Fresh Fest 2021. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. Which, again, that is something we support here on the show. Yes, regardless sure. of name ownership and whatnot, Fresh Fest is still a good thing. Correct. People benefit, a lot of people benefit from Fresh yes. Fest. But there are several other programs being supported. Uh, Port and PA uh, got some grant money to continue their series. Nice. Yes. Uh, the Erie Ale Trail, uh, they're getting funded to help support um, the trail? promoting breweries up the there ale. in Erie, mm-hmm. up in that ways about. Uh, but, yeah, there are several. Uh, several additional programs. Uh, go check out uh, Bob Batts' article on the Post Gazette if you can get there. <laughs> if it's not behind a paywall, <laughs> right? I don't think it is because I was able to get there. Okay, but had you used you, had your you five run out of your articles yeah. from the month? But yeah, uh, PLCB is is trying to help people out in 2021. Well, awesome. they should agree. So that's it. That's all I got for news notes. Neat. We got one take money story, one give money story, yeah. and one beer to talk about. Give money, money, take money, money. Hoppin' frog, <laughs> peanut butter, hazelnut, caramel, chocolate, cake, cake. stout. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a mouthful. Stout's giving. Uh, it's good beer. Yeah, pretty good. It's uh, it's not uh, knock your socks off, but it's pretty good. I'm not mad at it. It's it wasn't not. disgustingly sweet either. No, for, it was not. For he- Being all those fucking words in the title. Right. (laughs) I feel like the chocolate is really subdued. And I feel like if the chocolate was stronger, it would hit that too too sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It could have been too sweet or too bitter. Mm -hmm. I, uh, yeah, I drink it again. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. So. Right. Only as dessert, but yes, I would drink a can uh, again. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. All right, uh, we've been talking for way too long without a fresh beer in front of us. Oh no! So, so we're gonna oh, s- no. we're gonna go to commercial. Really? Okay. Uh, we're gonna not get paid, and then we'll be right back. Okay. Cool. First Sip Brew Box is a one of a kind subscription service for craft beer lovers based right here in Pittsburgh. Every month, First Sip will send you a box full of craft beer enthusiast essentials, including T-shirts, glassware, and even food. Right now, our friends at First Sip Brew Box have an offer for you. Just sign up for a three-month subscription and get your fourth month free. Just enter the code HOPUSA when you sign up at firstsipbrewbox.com. That's H-O-P-U-S-A at checkout to get your fourth month free at firstsipbrewbox.com. Welcome back, everybody. This is episode 181, segment two. I am Adam, and I have been told, requested, Asked to be a little more lively coming back in on the segments. So, fine. Here. I'm more lively. I'm excited to be here, apparently. And I can't wait for you to listen to the rest of this podcast. There. Wow. Okay. I <laughs> there, is that better? <laughs> it's Stout's giving, everybody. It's, okay. First we asked off, for liveliness. We didn't yes. need the false positivity. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't Lord. need veiled sarcasm over that entire statement. <laughs> I want oh. genuine stouts giving excitement, Adam. We're we're still dialing it in. <laughs> we'll get there. Between Clearly. between segment two and three, like Casey and Kelsey and uh, Katie, all three of you. <laughs> <laughs> if you could all just take Adam by the back of the arm and just give him some of that underjaw talking to just I like, mm, need you to get your shit in order. If there's three of us, did you pregame? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, How it's like it's, do you see right now? it's Dragon Ball Z rules because there's Katie and there's Kelsey and then you, you know, fusion dance into Casey. Fusion, fusion dance. dance. <laughs> okay. Duh. Okay. Fucking nerds will get that one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. I, I do get the oddball Dragon Ball Z <laughs> reference, actually. But yes, we Shamefully are. Shamefully enough. We are here for Stout's Giving, Woo-hoo! which means it's time for another Stout. Hurrah. Yay. Huzzah. So. Huzzah. Katie, Huzzah. do you have one? Up and ready and available for us to drink and discuss. I do. We have the Pipeworks Imperial Hyper Dog, which is the opposite of Adam. That's right. Because I'm a quiet little cat. <laughs> Actually, my smallest cat is my loudest animal. <laughs> I believe yeah, it. It's like same. an elephant Knocking running shit up over. And down the stairs. <laughs> yeah. I hear um, her run down that hallway. She is just like, <laughs> Wow, so vocal. You yeah. will not hear me running up and down the stairs. I give you that guarantee. <laughs> Fair enough. So the Pipeworks Imperial Hyperdog is an imperial milk stout with cacao, nibs, vanilla, lactose, and coffee. Coffee brought to you by Dark Matter Coffee. Um, oh, Steve, here's an answer to your question. The artwork on the can is by Eric Lundquist. Okay. This is 10.5%, and this is from Pipeworks Brewing Company, brewed and canned in Chicago, Illinois. In our untapped little blurb on this is definitely 
references the original artwork on the can, which was a dog in outer space with a jet pack, which is not what's on the can anymore. No. Because <laughs> um, it says the hyper dog has gone supernova in the milkiest way. We've sent the classic hyper dog over the moon with more malt, chocolate, vanilla, and coffee in this imperialized spacecraft beer. Just lift off the cap. It's a can and enjoy this universally delicious bar out brew. So that definitely is played for the old marketing. They've changed this. Yeah, <laughs> that was what it came in a bottle. <laughs> they yeah. looked like a rejected Lars Brakes face. <laughs> yes. 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 Definitely yeah. Lars Brake face esque. <laughs> so, yeah. but yeah, so now we have a black lab in some sort of a crest, a fancy crest portrait. It's a regal yeah. beagle. And he's, and he's with a coffee yes. Eaton Park style or, um, Diner style. Diner, Denny's yeah. style carafe pouring coffee into a glass. So they're really banking on that coffee. So if this doesn't taste like cacao nibs, vanilla, lactose, and most importantly, coffee, coffee. we going to get mad at you. I have a problem. It's pipe works. I have faith. Yeah. Pipe works. They're a bit new to our market. But they are not new in general. No, no. They're just new to our market. So perhaps this whole branding changed when they started canning and perhaps. expanded. Perhaps. To new markets yes. like ours. So, yes. This looks more black. Yes. And I feel like the last one was more brown. Like both are, yes. you Agreed. can't see through them. Agreed. I, I ran but it this through. Is... You, you haven't been here, Katie, since I've started a new battery of tests. Okay. <laughs> but I have a new test where I bought a new camera light. Mm -hmm. And I turned that thing up to 100. And it's very bright. And you've seen that. I did see the bright light. Yeah. So the I new did not go towards it. Yeah, the new way of judging stouts is how much light gets through. On the hopping frog, a little bit light did get through, and it does come out more brown. Mm -hmm. No light penetrated this pipe works beer. Yeah, <laughs> this is this is black coffee color. Yeah, for sure. this yes. bodes well. Yes, this is thick and it's dark, and no light penetrates. I didn't <laughs> watch the pour. Was there a head on it? Are you a teeny bit? A little bit. This is a little bit, but it's just not. Uh, yeah, it's still not really there. On the nose, I'm getting I'm getting a good bit of chocolate. I'm getting a lot of coffee. Coffee, straight oh, coffee. Chocolate. Do you want to mix it with mine? Mine's got coffee. In oh it. no, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'm not no, sure what you. I'm getting. Interesting. I have feelings, mixed feelings. I like it. I like it as well. However, Steve, I'll let your however go first. I don't necessarily have a however. I oh. just like it as well. <laughs> I like it, but I and I and I know it's wrong. But for some weird reason, I got a little bit of raspberry. Your tongue is broken. I know it's weird. What? Like, just a half a splash of raspberry, and I know it's wrong. Yeah, that's not correct. I didn't get that. I I'm didn't not getting <laughs> any raspberry. I'm not getting the chocolate or vanilla. I'm just getting the coffee, and you can't tell that there's lactose. I can't. No. You mm -hmm. can't really tell that there's mm -hmm. lactose, because it's not really ultra, ultra thick. No. Um, also, it does say, sorry, it says cacao. Nibs, yeah, so it it's going to be cacao. more bitter. It's right. not going to be. Right. Mm -hmm. I find this a lot more smooth than the other one, though. Do you? I do. It's interesting. Yeah, I was going to say, comparatively, this one's a lot less sweet. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. But I don't think it has the uh, the acrid aftertaste quite as much yeah. as the Hop and Frog. Correct. Oh, no way. The because, hopping. again, that was because of that hazelnut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Hop and Frog, I thought, was more syrupy yeah. than this. Yes. Yeah, this isn't syrupy. I wouldn't say it's necessarily easier or smoother to drink, for me, at least. I think it's just kind of, they're, they're two different approaches to the same thing. Mm-hmm. They're both good. Yeah, they're both good. This one is bigger. This one is a lot less of a dessert, though. Yeah, you could eat this with a piece of chocolate cake. Yeah. Or drink mm -hmm. this with a piece of chocolate cake. Well, I mean, for as thick as it is. Yeah. Yeah, you could drink this on its own. You could. I could see actually drinking two of these before I would drink two of the Hoppin' Frog. Ooh. Even though this is 10%. I was going to say, you're not going to see after the second one. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Uh, or you're going to yeah. be seeing more. It's going to be hard to find a third, then. <laughs> <laughs> Well, big difference between me having two or three and Steve having two or three. This is very true. I'm not walking anywhere after three of these. No. I am asleep on the couch. No, that's nutty buys. <laughs> it's like, after two, yeah, yeah. I stopped playing Tekken. <laughs> 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 but this is, uh, I would say, a gift to the world. Yeah, it's good beer. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. And again, for 10%, you be hard-pressed to f uh, like know that. Correct. Yeah, it is not. it is not just a... Just a alcohol bomb. Right. It's not an alcohol bomb. It doesn't taste particularly boozy. It doesn't really burn in any way. But also, again, like like we said, it's not sweet. So there's not there's nothing to warn you. Right. There's no <laughs> indicators. Yeah. There's no indicators except for when you start feeling warm and you go, hi, Gosh. wait a minute. <laughs> Let me look at this label. Oh, no. Oh, shit. <laughs> what have I done? Ooh. 
But yeah, yeah, good beer otherwise. Yeah, I like it. Um, but we had previously mentioned that this is a gift to the world. Yes. So it is time for us to get to our 2020 Hop Nation USA gift guide. If you're listening on a Friday, as you should, it's Black Friday. Yes, even though it's Black Friday month. Yeah. But yes, this is our, our time of year to uh, give some suggestions, both good and bad, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, of, mm-hmm. of gifts that you can get mm-hmm, for mm-hmm, the beer mm-hmm. lover in your life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I have the good, yeah. the bad, and the ugly. That's, oh. that's good. Yeah. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> that's good content. I like that. <laughs> All on one website. Yes. Wow. Oh. I'll, right. I'll say at the very top, though, if you listen to our commercial, we advertise for a sip brew box. Yes. So that's an automatic... Yes, that's it a is. good. That's an automatic good. Go buy that, mm-hmm. and I can tell you their December box is going to have a an original design for their apparel. Yes, nice. Yeah, nice. so check check them out for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Plus, they have a tendency to use local artists when mm-hmm. they do that. So yes. if you're doing the local business, you're getting a twofer on right. that one. Mm-hmm. Yes, a favorite. Yes, I, I appreciate Steve that you partitioned them off in particular. Right. Uh, I want to quarantine. I want to quarantine <laughs> first at Brewbox yes. as a Dennis. as an actual good product yes. that everybody can enjoy. Because Lord knows what everybody found. I know I found some wild shit. <laughs> <laughs> Real wild shit out there on the web. Yeah. So yes, they are they are in their own good category. Right. <laughs> Go support them. They are good people. Yes. Yes. All right. We with that Dennis. in mind, would anybody like to go first with their holiday buyer's guide? <laughs> what they found? No. Okay, you I, can. I, I don't want to. I don't want to set the the <laughs> yeah, tone for this. <laughs> That's fair enough. Uh, so I do not look at lists. I like to go find other gifts that you could possibly give. That's because all the lists are the same. I know all the lists are the same. They just copy off a of men's health and dis- disseminate <laughs> to the public. <laughs> yeah, I also did not do a BuzzFeed listicle. Right, right. Because <laughs> nobody on this show ever goes on to other people's websites and read their articles and then regurgitate them. <laughs> no. no one ever does it's not that. What we're Lately, it's not what we're saying. We admitted it on the last podcast, <laughs> last episode. <laughs> It's not what we're saying. <laughs> we're saying, but also, here's Just, Steve with your shopping yeah. essentials. Yes. So what I do go looking at is I go looking at other interesting websites. Particularly, I like crowdfunding websites. Uh-huh. I like to see what could possibly be an innovation in beer. Oh, this should be good. Yeah. I love this idea. Uh, there's a lot of garbage <laughs> that I found. <laughs> That's what I meant by this should be good. Yeah, I found a lot of garbage. <laughs> a lot of things you should not bother with. Uh, there was a beer zuka. Uh, Splain. shotgun. Explain that to yeah. me. Is that like a t-shirt cannon? No, or it's not like... Ounce cans? Nope, Potato nope. gun with beer cans. Nope, you guys are giving it way too much. <laughs> yeah, but... Well, in that case, let's lock good. that down. <laughs> yeah. Then you start your own Kickstarter with that idea. Nope, this was basically taking the end of a small plunger, removing the handle, and then putting some PVC pipe into it. So it's a beer bong. Yes, but it creates a vacuum seal around the top of a can. Oh. oh, and so it's it's a beer bong that you can do yourself with a can. How? Why? And then That's... you puncture it, and you do the shotgun. But I saw another one of those, but it was a wow. beer koozie with a flexi straw, and then to you... do the snorkel. Yes, mm-hmm. to do a yes. strapito. Yes. Beer but... sounds larger. It is larger. Yeah. Yes, it and is. It is large and unwieldy, and much more in the way of just straight up alcoholism. Because yes. if it's a one man beer bong, yes. <laughs> that means that you're doing it by yourself. Yes. Which means you're not with friends and you're not at a party and trying to do this in any order of socialization. Or, or all of your friends are doing it at the same time. Or yeah. distancing. Right. Yeah. Well, so you do just. Yourself. That's or, why you just, or, you know, Steve did advocate boofing either earlier. So Steve did. The show did not. You no, know, Steve did. The I size, said Steve. The size of the hose. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm is not indicative of good for boofing. Okay. Very big. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to dig into this. What size is good for that? Not as big as this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for calling him on that. I appreciate that. I'm just, uh, look, I don't put things up there. That, it, But it, I don't shame people who do. But ah, we don't shame people ah, who do. Adam, ah, where were you? <laughs> And he was taking a sip. We'll let that one slide. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we were there. That was your prime moment. <laughs> it was. But I'm glad that you guys were able to catch it. I don't I don't suggest, but my, the whole point is, I don't suggest investing in this one because it's just something you can build out of things at Lowe's. Yes. 
What I do suggest... Like when you all have that high school friend that everybody calls Beaker? Yeah. For some reason? Yes. There's always that one mechanically inclined person who goes to Votech who knows how to b- build cool shit. What I do suggest investing in is I found something, and it's for the nerds in our audience. Yes. We do have a number of nerds, a handful, if not more. We're all nerds. That's why we're listening to a... N- Shut up. Don't tell them that. <laughs> if they haven't figured it out by now... <laughs> <laughs> I found dice that one would use oh, for D and D. Yes, yeah, I knew where this was. That's going. Dungeons and Dragons for those not in the know. Yes, uh, it is. They're they're brew dice, and they're crafted to look like little beers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, okay. they're actually very nice looking. Yeah, they're very nice looking. Uh, they come in a multitude of flavors, so you can get Pilsner, Lager, Red, IPA, Porter, and Stout dice. And they all have like a little foamy head inside of them that if you roll a one, the foam comes up to the top. Which I'm very curious how they were able to pull that off. It's all resin. <laughs> yeah, but wouldn't that affect the weight of it? Well, there, that was my no, thought there, as well. It, it's not actually liquid inside. No, I understand that. But it, if what, I don't know if the color change would change the density of the, the resin. No, I don't, I, I, don't, I, don't I don't think it does. <laughs> I don't know. I assume it doesn't. But yeah, you can invest in that right now on Kickstarter and you can get a whole set of dice for $50 or you can get a flight of dice, which would include one of every flavor for 55 Now, that sounds like expensive, right? However. However, I went and did some digging about how much these nerds spend on artisanal dice. Yeah, oh, it's hundreds of dollars. It's a, it, yeah. It's yeah. a shitload because I found another set on artisandice.com. Oh, because that exists. Yeah, that exists. <laughs> oh, now so you now know. you know that. Uh, it's compressed hops. Oh. So they take real hop, they take real hop flowers and then they put it into a resin cast mm-hmm. and then they carve it out and then they put copper inlay numbers. That sounds actually very nice. It's a very niche. Yeah. It's very yeah, niche, yeah. but yeah. also it was a very nice looking set. But for the entire set, it was $283. <laughs> oh, so you really have to love the nerds in your life. <laughs> Those are some real dick swinging dice. Yeah. I've had friends that had specific dice for specific games, and it was like bad juju to like use one set for a different game. Like this is this is my you This know, is my D D set. This is my I don't know any Battle other... Battletech. Monopoly. I don't know any other games. <laughs> Battletech. <laughs> this is my other game set. And Mech like... Warrior. <laughs> Tekken. No. <laughs> Steve's... That's controllers. <laughs> are, are you done outing yourself? Are there more gifts? <laughs> I have never played any of these. <laughs> I just know they exist. I've played D&D. It's actually a lot of fun yeah. if, you, if you're willing to buy in. I played for like 15 minutes and killed my character. <laughs> and I was like, you need me to be over here drinking. Like, <laughs> well, I'll be over here. <laughs> well, it's not me. for me. I get, I tried. I was bored immediately. If if you have the if you have the right, uh, I believe the term is dungeon master. The person running the running the game. If you have the right person running the game, it is actually it can be very fun. That's what I've heard. So. No I only know all those games because game. I know the video games are based off. That's of fair. Uh, <laughs> that's fair. I, I mean, there's definitely some famous people out there because I think isn't like Joe Manganiello like huge on D and D. Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel. Yep. Yes. Yeah, because I just watched uh, Big Bang Theory. Mm-hmm. There's an episode where the girls get into a D and D game and they edge the guys out, and it's like uh, William Shatner, William Joe Shatner, Manganiello, Joe Manganiello, yeah. and this is real life. Uh, who was the basketball player? Oh, um, Lamar Odom. No, no. that would be really funny, actually. <laughs> no, Kevin Durant, Kareem, Kareem, yep. John Stockton. It was Kareem. <laughs> yes. So, with yes. Will Wheaton, he can't hide them dice in those shorts. And <laughs> that is part, I believe, of and like Vin Diesel's in it. Like, there's a whole sh- like Hollywood yeah. contingency a- subset. Contingency. Yeah. Dame yeah. Judy Dench up in this piece. Of D&D <laughs> I don't see her doing that. Actually, I think she does. Really? Mm-hmm. I could awesome. totally actually see that. I believe so, that. yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think Judy Dench actually got into it because she was on set with Vin Diesel oh. on, like, the Chronicles of Riddick. And, oh. and I think he got her hooked. Yeah, I think yep. he got, like, some of the cast and crew you into go, that. Go, Vin Diesel. Mm-hmm. Nerds. <laughs> but, yeah, so beer-themed dice is a very... Niche. It's a niche thing, but thing. it's something we haven't talked about before. So fair, there fair. We go. definitely new. <laughs> Very, did yes. not know and, it existed. And if that is something where you two worlds are able to collide. 
beer and D&D, by yeah. all means. Help out that Kickstarter. Yeah. I just, just Google look, it. I mean, they look nice. If I played any of that, I might buy one. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> the designer and luxury dice is definitely not a new thing. So Luxury dice. Just, Band yeah, Band it's a it. thing. <laughs> Luxo dice. Luxo dice. Hey, I'm luxury dice over here. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Somebody I drive save. a Rolls Royce. Huh? <laughs> somebody save us, please. <laughs> Sticking in that Kickstarter theme, but more of the Etsy theme. So people who make stuff for you, they have, and I know we've talked about like the advent calendar, but they have one where you can fill it yourself. So you can buy the box, support that local online business and then fill it with a beer from all your favorite breweries. Oh, I actually really like that. your city. So in Pittsburgh, you could fill it with Hitchhiker, Grist, Dancing Gnome, Four Points, Couch, all of the breweries that you know and love, and you can, like, kind of create a journey for whoever you're giving this to. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I yeah. do, too. That's so a really it, good idea. So It's, it's a, a thoughtful gift. It's a thoughtful yes. gift. You're supporting the small online shop from Etsy, mm-hmm. and then you can go and support your local breweries and take them on this beer journey of your city. So you can either give it to someone who lives in the city who, you know, can hit all these breweries or maybe hasn't been to one in a while, or if you're giving it to an out-of-town guest or someone who doesn't have access to everything that we have access to, you can be like, here's like the best of the best of our Bruce. Scene. I really like that. Yeah. I tried I tried to get a friend who did woodworking to build these, but uh yeah, he didn't, so yeah. his, he misses out. Boo. But uh, <laughs> Kelsey's point is that yeah, you can both support small business Saturday and small brewery Sunday. Yeah. Which is coming up this Saturday and Sunday Sat- because yep. you're listening on a Friday as you should. You're listening or on, on a, a Black Thursday. Friday as you yeah. should. <laughs> Yeah, so Small Business Saturday, Brewery, Brewery Sunday, support your local business this holiday season, like, yeah. on hashtag mm-hmm. shop yeah. local. Yeah. Hitchhiker all up in my fridge. Yes, yes. And I'm right now, actually. <laughs> yeah. So I've got a, a, this is a legitimate gift. Okay. Uh, and this is... Uh, don't, this, don't delegitimize our gifts. Yeah, we're on <laughs> we not good gifts. legitimate gifts. Well, I'm just leading into what's going to come in the next oh, round. Oh, you have a, be not a legitimate gift after? Okay. Yeah. But this is uh, for 2021, not for right now, but this is for the future, whenever whenever we're able to do things again. Mm-hmm. Say the future. The future. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You are very welcome. But this uh, is the Pelican Day Venture Sling Cooler. Pelicans what? making coolers? <laughs> Pelican makes coolers. They don't make just tough boxes I anymore. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's obviously a very Yeti-esque type soft side cooler. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the way it is designed, it is <laughs> more of in a duffel bag configuration. But it is <laughs> Yeti has a duffel bag. No, I'm listening. Go, keep going. I'm but just... <laughs> the way it is set up is you can absolutely perfectly fit in two four packs of 16-ounce cans okay. directly into the cooler. So that you don't have to worry about carrying around a, a lunky cooler for all of your can releases. Yeah. So this is a, a cooler that is absolutely perfect for can releases whenever we have them again. So wait, it's two four packs. Correct, yes. In this cooler. Yes. What plus, is this? Plus ice. Uh, plus, plus ice. Okay, plus ice. What is this cooler going to run someone? It is going to cost you a measly can I, oh, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait can <laughs> we all guess? Yeah, let's all do a little round table guess. Okay. Right. 325. All right, 325, Katie. 250. Kelsey. Hold on. You said it's comparable to Yeti? In terms of construction. I mean, it's Pelican. So, like, Pelican Pelican don't shit around. 179.99. Okay. Specific. That was specific and also wrong. (laughs) $149. Oh, wow. We overestimated. You did. Kelsey wins. When I envisioned this case, because you said it was a Pelican case, I just imagined like the big camera cases with the foam inside and then like each. (laughs) Individual oh. can had a space cut out. <laughs> like, that's what I was thinking. And then you said it was a duffel bag. And I'm just like, I don't know what the hell any of this. Wait, wait. Can we take this idea, though, and expand it? Because what if instead of the foam, there are like ice walls that you put in your freezer and then stick them in? They're like hard side. Oh, yeah. So each, you maybe not each can, but each four pack would have its own little area within this case. Or, and 
maybe this is just workshopping. I don't know how yeah. things work We're perfectly. We're modifying actual yeah. Pelican cases. Yeah. So you take the Pelican case and you do the cutouts for the foam, but underneath it you have like a metal wire works. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then in the center you can put like a dry ice yeah. mm -hmm. or something, okay. and then it sits on the metal wire rack and then... That disseminates to the different other, like the other cages yeah. that are touching cans. Yeah. Yeah. It keeps everything cold and then it's all locked inside the case. And you don't have to deal with moisture. It's fancy. Wow. Yeah, exactly. No are we onto something here? Coming we Christmas might 2021. <laughs> nobody, nobody steal this. Yeah. You're all going to be Hobbit in a lot of trouble. USA yeah. edition of the Pelican. Trademarks. This shit going to be more than a buck fifty. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the 325 case. Yeah. yeah. The Day Venture Sling Cooler. So whenever we're able to actually do can releases again, I think this would work really well that way. You don't have to walk around with a big bulky cooler anymore. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something nice and compact. And you can drink what you have in and then put in new. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm tired of putting it in my long shop and hoping that it's... <laughs> Still kind of cool when I get home. <laughs> I put my beers in a Dollar General bag, and then I put those that bag inside of my book bag, and, <laughs> <laughs> and then we go. Pretty from much, there. Yeah. yeah. And that's how I transport to the show. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I have a lunchbox I use. I just throw a little bit of ice in it and put them in my lunchbox. That's pretty much how I do it too. Yeah, that's nice. I should do that. <laughs> or you could get yourself the Pelican. <laughs> Or the one that exists, or the one that's going to exist. <laughs> the Hop Nation USA the one, version. Yes, oh. the one that's being invented. Or R and D. We need a Kickstarter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, did you also have a non, a a shitty gift? Anything that comes off of those lists. Okay. Yeah. Fair Anything. Enough. <laughs> the the different varieties of can openers that you're supposed to have. All the different tumblers. The the customized shit. Don't do that. We've said it before. It's not nice to do to people. No. That's it. Although I did see I did see a white elephant gift list. I don't know. That wouldn't be bad. <laughs> that was just full of like garbage that was under thirty dollars. Mm, yeah. And some of the garbage on there was like a Thanos gauntlet bottle opener. Why? Because <laughs> it's garbage and it's under thirty dollars. <laughs> Hey, it's not we, something you necessarily actually, want. We had one of those when I was deployed and I never understood why, because we didn't have beer. We definitely had a Thanos gaunt, like the, the glove, the I, thing I in the shop. I definitely almost bought my husband that last year for Christmas. Nice. Nice. <laughs> we, we set a price limit and a gift limit, and I was only like one gift left on the limit, and it kind of fit both. And I was oh, like, okay. all right, he's a big Avengers fan. He would probably get a kick out of this and love it. And I went to order it, and it was back ordered. And I was like, okay, so maybe not this year. <laughs> but I have a Predator bottle opener, and I'm obsessed with it. That's pretty sweet. Mm. Yeah. So if you want to hide all your beers, do you just cover it in mud? <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly what I do. Chris can't see them that way. <laughs> she likes to hover the bottle opener <laughs> over it. <laughs> and Chris gets mad at her and he's like, come on, do it. Do it now. <laughs> do it. <laughs> oh, shit. Yells at her until she opens it. <laughs> Katie, what do you got? Uh, I got a website. Ooh, a website. Oh. So uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uncommongoods.com. Oh, yeah. I love uncommongoods.com. Um, <laughs> and some of their stuff is actually like like Uncommon. local or handmade stuff. Some of it is big corporation stuff. But there's like if you just do a, a word search for beer, you get a whole mess of things and a variety of price points, too. Um, some of them I'm just going to ask you not to buy. For example. <laughs> uh, well, any of these beer brewing kits... Mm -hmm. Don't buy those. Yeah. <laughs> um, the beer caddy with bottle openers overpriced for a cooler. Don't buy that. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> could we say something about those, but we shouldn't yep. because he's a good friend. <laughs> um, yes. Like some of it's just dumb. Um, some of it has the potential for being really interesting. Uh, like Beeropoly. I'd play that. Watch. Shh. Yeah, you know, just to see a mm -hmm. uh, beer and or pretzel and beer cheese kit where you can make the beer cheese with your own beer. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, yeah, I would yeah. appreciate that actually. Yeah, I would enjoy that. that. Yeah. Um, there's a couple towels. One is like beer and food pairings. The other one is beer, uh, just beer themed, just like, you know, different beer facts about it. Uh, beer infused rubs six pack. Ooh, rubbies. Yeah. Nah. Rubbies. <laughs> is it from Akron? I don't know. Oh. I did not ask. Uh, beer pantry cookbook. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then there's the beer cap state thing. I think we've all seen that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Don't buy that. Then you get into some weirder stuff, like why does this exist? Craft IPA beer shampoo and conditioner. Hey, I've seen that. I it's well. like, That's it's not like my jam. B-R-O-O. Um, with the umlaut. The Chilsner? <laughs> Please don't buy that. It's the Chilsner. What's the Chilsner? You guys don't know what the Chilsner is? No, I don't drink oh. Pilsner, so I don't care. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just a name thing. It is like an icicle thing that you put in the oh. freezer, and then you stick it in oh, your bottle of yeah. beer to keep your beer ice cold. Like, unless oh. you're... If you're just like... If you happen to have cans of MGD laying around, and you need to like get through them, then yes, get a Chilsner. But like... So it's pretty much just whiskey rocks, but for beer. Yes. Okay. It's the yes. icicle for the white wine, except right. for beer. Okay, so but. rocks. Let's talk about that for a second, because I need someone to explain to me why this even fucking exists. Money. <laughs> beer foaming stones. Beer foaming stones. Like, they, so. are they trying to promote the foam or reduce the foam? Increase the foam. Wow. So if you are a person who is sick of being attacked by the clean glass mafia, this could be the product for you. I don't know. <laughs> um... So basically you put the stone in the glass and you pour the beer on top and it says that it will create a thick lacy head that will last until you finish your drink. Huh. Huh. So it's a continuously foaming thing. Yeah. So something in the stone reacts with the carbonation in the Uh, beer. And it does say it enhances the flavor and reduces the acidity. How? How? I don't How know. does it change the pH? It's a website. It does not explain the science. I want all these answers <laughs> right now. I want all I these answers, know. and I almost... <laughs> but, ah. like, I feel like there are some beers that... Like, I don't want to mess with the chemical properties of my beer. I want right. it to be the beer that was brewed for me the way that it was That's brewed. why you yeah. bought it. Yeah, exactly. Like, if I'm trying to manipulate something, I shouldn't be drinking this beer. Plus, right. how does it know to stop foaming? Apparently, it just doesn't. You're just going to have a foamy head on your beer for the rest of your glass. But, I mean, how does it stop foaming to the point that it doesn't overfoam? is what I'm saying. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Where's the regulator? It has right. 24 reviews. It has four and a half stars. So somebody's enjoying this. How many of those Unless, are from like, Click Farms? I don't know. I wonder know. if they're, you know, throwing the stones in, like, halfway through the beer. Like, the beer's lost its head. Maybe it says it's pour like... pour it on the stone. Oh, mm. yeah. never mind. Yeah. Hmm. It, yeah, don't buy that. Yeah. No. yeah, but maybe buy that and tell us how it works. Yeah, right. or if you have <laughs> yes. these and you know how they work, let us know. Yeah, uh, if you have like throw around money, buy it. But yeah, yeah, that sounds terrible. That's a don't buy product. A do buy product is the outdoor outdoor beer table. Yeah, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It is a small little table with two cup holders and a center dish for your snacks and your beer that you just stake into the grass next to your your lazy chair. Oh, Oh, okay. So it's like a tag along for like if you're tailgating or like if you have kids and you have to go to their soccer games. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I I feel like that one's functional. Um, And the other thing that's on here that I cannot grasp my head on, this would be the ugly. I I guess people are dressing their beers. Oh, yeah. Like little beer sweaters. Oh, not just. We have cold beer coats. I've seen the coats. Which look like a North Face coast. We have have, uh, a life preserver. We have the a beer preserver. preserver. We have a beer sleeping bag. Does the, is the life is preserver it, functional? I don't but. know. <laughs> we have the beer sleeping bag, which looks like a mummy bag. Uh, there is the parka, which has the fur hood, obviously. Oh, you got to have that. We yeah. have the adventure vest, which is very uh, Steve Irwin slash fly fishing. Does it have pockets that are functional? Can I put? Yeah. It has tiny pockets. It, it looks the like they flap open. I couldn't really tell you, but the zipper works. Okay. The zipper's functional. Okay, all right. Um, so, yeah, and then there is the beer sweater. Yes. Yeah, that's important. You yeah. Know, Pretty you, classic. You want to you yeah. keep your beer warm, I guess. And then, obviously, because this is the road we're heading down, the flannel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Makes sense. Yes. You dress now, your beer up in a little po- Pennsylvania like, tuxedo. <laughs> are these just, like, clothing items or, like, are they koozie-type items, like, they're, to insulate the beer? They're, they're koozies. koozies. Oh, okay. I think they are intended to insulate, but mostly it just looks like tiny beer fashion, which is comical to yeah. me. <laughs> it is. It's tiny yeah. beer fashion. I mean, whatever. <laughs> cool. And then there's, like, other, like, odds and ends on here. Um, that, that's ugly. I would definitely put those in the white elephant gift because yes. somebody would enjoy those, but not everybody would Correct. enjoy those. Yes. But then you yeah. also have to gift it with a beer as well. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like an MGD well, you can, you can, if you get the flannel one, you can get the dogfish head Pennsylvania tuxedo. 
There you Makes go. perfect yeah. sense. Yep. I haven't had that one. And then they just have a yeah. large variety of bottle openers, games, uh, glasses. Yeah. And the general. And others. Wares. General, yeah. yeah. Just stuff. Pretty much if you go on Wish or AliExpress <laughs> like, and you just type beer, you get a swap meet of garbage. Yeah. So <laughs> these are, there's you have to find the diamond in the rough. There's a lot yeah. of stuff on here I would actually like. Yeah, there's I would, no I would stuff on those sites. Buy that I would for buy. myself. Uncommon goods you can find yeah. like a half and half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Steve, you got one more? No, I was just saying, like you if you go on those swap meet sites, mm -hmm. you, the, you could put together a you remember how Game Boys used to be like over accessorized. Yes. So you could put yeah. like lights and magnifying and all kinds of other goof oh, shit yeah. on there. No. You can yeah. do that with beer cans now. <laughs> <laughs> I found like you could put together a package of like shitty plastic things that attach to your beers. Uh, you can get a shower caddy with a suction cup. Oh yeah, I saw that. Oh, I have a suction cup beer koozie that somebody bought me. Yeah. You, yeah. You get that? Yeah. You put it in the shower. I've not used it. Nothing sticks to my walls. You can get a uh, like a little. It's a little tab that goes over the top of the mouth of a can of beer. Okay. So it's a sippy cup. So it well, it protects the beer <coughs> from like a bug getting in. Yeah. Or oh, like all right. Or from shower water. Oh. <laughs> oh. So mm -hmm. is it not unlike a like a uh, disposable coffee cup where it's got the little flap? A little bit, yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. So oh. it's like a flat, but it looks more like a guitar pick. It just uh, goes over the yeah mouth of a can. Okay, okay. And then there is a little plastic handle I saw for like a buck and a half All that right. will attach to a beer can, and it has little clips that will attach to the top rim of a can, mm -hmm. and then has kind of a holster on the bottom, and I guess it's just like you know pressure of its own, but you can drink the can like a like a mug. Oh. oh, all right. I'm yeah. not mad at that. I don't think I'd use it, but I'm not mad at it. I think I think that one only works if you pair it with that uh, that can top ripper. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. okay. that, the, the that, 360. Yeah, yeah the 360 yeah. cutter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that might actually pair okay. Yeah. But then again, I don't know th that that handle because the handle works on the lip yeah. of the can. Because then the lip and then would you be remove gone. the lip. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, so it's very specific. Yeah. Placement yeah. on the can. Somebody needs to figure it out so you can do both. <laughs> yeah. Some, well, I wonder if the you lip can buy the flannel beer koozie, the flannel shirt or the sweater yeah. beer koozie, because it actually has the arms. Like, think if you're doing I'm a little teapot. Short stuff. It has. That's like picking up arms. a little baby. So then you <laughs> could just Wee! pick it up by, by the arms as a handle. Yeah. And there you go. Right you can say, hey, you want to go uppy? And you go, wee, <laughs> and drink your beer. Nice. <laughs> I do like uppy. uppy. So if you have any other suggestions of beer things that we should either look into or make fun of, yes, let us know. Yes, yeah. we're, we're very there's curious. still time before the uh, winter <laughs> yes. extravaganza, holiday, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> your holiday of choice. We don't give there a shit yeah. what it is. Exactly. You we know celebrate. you're drinking your way through it anyway. Yes. Hell yeah. Who cares? HopNationUSA at gmail.com. Slide into them DMs if that's your jam. And again, there's a pretzel and beer cheese making kit if you feel like you need to send us something. Right. Yes. 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 But before we get into them sending us all the gifts because they love and adore this show, mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what do we think about this Pipeworks? Tastes uh, like coffee. I liked it. I yeah. did too. This our coffee. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah, that's a good beer. Yeah. I like coffee. Yep, yep. This or coffee. Yep. All right. Why do you say we take a quick break, reload, get some fresh beers up in this piece? Yep, yes. Yep. And then we have a little more fun in segment three. Okay. Oh, and a yeah. new segment. What game I can I lose today? New segment. A brand new, never before played segment on this show. Grain. New for 2020. It's going to be lit AF, I believe, is what the kids say. Can we stop having new things in 2020 already? <gasps> that is what the kids say. Nice job, Adam. Thank you. Thank that you. That is what the kids say. It is on fleek. Okay. And you're done. <laughs> Too far. We'll be back. We'll be back. Are you tired of watching the same old awesome movies? Are B-movies more your style? Then the folks over at They Called This A Movie have you covered. Join us every Thursday as we review the worst of the worst in sci-fi, action, comedy, and more. We are available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Podbean at theycalledthisamovie.podbean.com. They Called This A Movie, testing the strength of friendships one terrible movie at a time. Welcome back, Hop Nation USA. It is Stout's Giving today. Woo! See, that's how you do it. That's how I do it, and now I know for next... Stouts giving. Should have had Kelsey you, do the first segment the so that Adam had a tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
the one that shook me by the ground of the neck. Yeah. I just, need you to pick it up. Yeah. Well, thank you for, for stepping in. I do appreciate that, Kelsey. You're welcome. You are a true friend. <laughs> so thank, thank you. you for that. Thank you. Thank but you. it is Stout's giving. We've had yes. two fine beers. Yes. And now it's time for a third. I assume it's going to be fine. I mean, come on. I'm actually pretty pumped for this. I'd okay. better be fine. I actually spent a little bit on that. Game. <laughs> <laughs> I... I don't care how if it makes me a dick. I'm going to say it. Whoever the fuck they had to pay for that kind of can art, there's a lot going on there. It is, if it's we, nice If looking. we paid per piece, then all of the money you spent on that beer went to that label. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's possible. Yes. yes. <laughs> and you can see that label on the Twitter. Yeah, on and Twitter on and Instagram. And Twitter's into Instagram. Possibly Facebook. Yeah, it, yeah. Goes on, it goes on the Facebook as well. There you go. It goes on the things. Yes. If yeah. you know how to use social media, you'd know this. I do. I just don't go on Facebook. Uh, you've been on there at least once. It's true. Or at least three times. <laughs> at least I think you're times? friends with all of us, and I'm confident you didn't accept friend requests from all three of us at true. once. That is so true. We can yes. say with confidence you've been on there. Yes. Ma- maybe four times if we include the time you created the account. Uh, that would be yeah, because I yeah. didn't know any of you at that time. Yeah. Yep. So Adam's right. been in his entire life on Facebook four times at least. <laughs> now we know. Nice. Price. Can you use PayPal? Uh, no. Uh, do you know what Venmo is? I do, and I don't use okay. it. Okay. <laughs> what is Zell? It's another bullshit <laughs> corporation money that? sucking it yeah. venue. It doesn't suck money from you. It like, doesn't no, suck money from you. I know you. it doesn't. There's, there's yeah. no charges unless you're doing actual business, but you just don't put business in the thing. Oh, no, I fully agree. Yeah. <laughs> I just choose just not to lie. use it. I just prefer not to. If you do use money <laughs> apps for your business, use Square, because I like that they email me my receipts. Agreed. Hmm. Agreed. But that's not why we're here. Okay. No, we're, we're here, here to talk stats. 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 And beer. Stats. 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 So, what stats is? So, Kelsey. What's yeah. in the gator rear? I have a nice little stout from Short Throw Brewing Company, which is in North Haven, Connecticut. This is the Resting My Greatness. It's a stout. I'm with coffee, my bitch face. Vermont maple syrup, yes. mm. and vanilla. Mm. This clocks in at 11.8%. Yeah, buddy. It's a baby beer. It's a baby beer, yeah. Uh, it's a potent treat. It's rich, decadent. It's laced with coffee, syrup, and vanilla. It's balanced and delightful. Well, let's get into it. Yeah. That is coffee syrup, and I was like, yeah, wait, what that is sounds really coffee good. syrup? <laughs> coffee, comma. Can I mainline syrup. syrup? Syrup, comma. Yeah, no. The- coffee scissor, I'm into it. <laughs> so you said this was out of Connecticut? Yes. yes. So maybe they're just trying to take take away from their neighbors of Rhode Island to have coffee milk? What the fuck they're- is coffee milk? What the hell is coffee milk? I don't know. It's coffee milk. It's from Rhode Island. <laughs> it's probably just a coffee that's How is Rhode Island even its own state? I like Rhode Island. It's Rhode the, Island. They is, got in early. Isn't it like <laughs> super duper early. tiny? Yeah. That's the teeny, teeny, tiny one, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They yeah. got in early. Even though they uh-huh. just changed their state name. To what? It used to be uh, Rhode Island and the Providence Plantation. But they, during the uh, sick prog 20, rock band. <laughs> it kind of is. But during the 2020 elections, there was a vote put forth to the citizens of Rhode Island to change the name to just Rhode Island. And it passed. So Rhode That's Island. Nobody knew the other name existed. Right. I mean, it was all on the books from way back in the day, <laughs> yeah. but they, they actually voted wait, to wait, officially wait, change the I name. I need to unpack this. Does every state have like its own official name? Yeah. Like yeah. Pennsylvania yeah, is. The Keystone State. Well, no, their official name is Pennsylvania. No. <laughs> is, it, is it Pennsylvania or is like the official title like the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania? Because you see that technically on everything. the mm-hmm. Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. That's yeah. on the flag, isn't it? Does mm-hmm. it say the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania? I don't, I don't think know. it does. Just as Pennsylvania? But there are other Commonwealths within the United States. There are as well. a total of four. Yeah. Also, Adam, why do you know so much about Rhode Island? <laughs> I'd like Rhode Island. My brother used to live there for a oh, little okay. bit. And I, if you have never been to Rhode Island, never. I would recommend. He's a big fan of the movie Me, Myself, and Irene. Uh-huh. That is a good movie. It, it really is a good movie. But uh, do yourself a favor. Go to Newport, Rhode Island. You would love it there. All right. Well, I, I'm dead serious. You would love it there. Right. Why do we love it there? Because it's awesome. They've got sailing. Well. <laughs> they well, got things white people like. Well, <laughs> I mean. All let's right. Let's open this beer. All right. Let's do that. Also, a shout out to at Ryan Writes on Things. He is the one who designed this can, and it is fantastic. Nice. We are doing the thing. All right. So resting my greatness is all poured and it, looking super tasty. And it is all abyss. No light could penetrate it. No. 
No signal was sent. <laughs> <laughs> this one's like Darkness. Red, ready brown. But it does smell good. Coffee. 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 Little bit of medicine y syrup. Is that mm. what that is? I was going to say licorice. I'm almost getting a smoke. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm could. getting a smoke. I'm with Katie on that. Smoky licorice? Which yeah, shouldn't I'm, be a thing. You know what? Yeah, I'm with you, Adam. There's a little bit of licorice. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm getting. It's I don't like licorice, so I guess I assume that's medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I understand the correlation. I get that. Licorice is the black licorice. Yeah, that's yeah. black licorice. Is the goddamn do- I owe you a bag of licorice. Of what? For what? For uh, what? We had a conversation about licorice, and we talked about the Australian, Australian licorice. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I complete. Oh, I suck. I'm like fucking months behind on that oh, one. Oh boy. <laughs> I completely yeah. forgot about it. I forgot about it too. I so. did too. All right. <laughs> So guess what you're getting for your birthday slash Christmas? Hooray. Australian licorice? I'm afraid to drink this. I'll drink it. Bottoms up. Ooh. It's a lot better than it smells. Wow. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> you know what? I really like the aftertaste on it, too. Yeah. I don't know. I get the scissor. Mm. Sipping on some scissor. This is the, thick. The syrup's like almost overwhelming on the back end. Mm-hmm. You, this is a one and done beer, without a doubt. I'm going to bed after this beer. So, Kelsey, you were here for the Agamemnon. I was, yeah. Yeah. I still think that beer has a lot more syrup flavor on it. It definitely does. Mm -hmm. I was just actually thinking that. Yeah. But this one, oh, boy. This one's big, and it has... Why is why is there so much licorice involved in this? I'm not know. getting any licorice. I'm getting, it, I'm getting it on, like, the front end a little bit. Mm-hmm. No, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So it's more of like a liquor-ish. Ah. Ah. Yes. Do you yeah. think it would benefit us to know what Rostovo's coffee is? It might. I'm assuming it's a roaster like Dark Matter provided coffee That's for the That's what I works. assumed it was, that would make but sense. maybe they have like a, a shtick to their coffee or something, right. and maybe that's what we're... But uh, we'll, we'll continue to drink on this. When it when it gets to full warm, because this isn't cold right now, but it's cool. It's cool. But when it warms up a little bit more, I'm very curious to see how it's going to be. Yeah. Very, very curious. Very, very. Yes. But very. in the meantime... It's time for a brand new game here on the Hop Nation USA podcast. Hurrah. It is Yay. called DraftKings. Oh, cool. Yes. <laughs> however, just to make sure that we do not get any into any trouble, it is spelled D-R-A-U-G-H-T. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, it is okay. DraftKings. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. DraftKings. 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 <laughs> yes. Or DraftKings. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to give you an opportunity. Based on Stout's ABVs, I'm going to give you a line. You need to tell me, is the ABV on this beer higher, lower, or is it a push? Oh, I'm really bad at betting lines. So <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to do That's some... That's why I stick to daily fantasy. We're going to do some betting lines on this. <laughs> I don't bet because I don't make enough money to throw it away. Well, luckily for I, you, <laughs> Katie, <laughs> you are going to get 50 Hop Nation bucks. Hey, hey, who's printing those? <laughs> They're imaginary. Okay. I love fake money. So each of you get 50. I like real money. I mean, I love <laughs> real money, but like for this, I'll take it. Listen, fake money. Uh, yeah, what we, is the conversion of Hop Nation yeah. bucks to Stanley well, Nichols? <laughs> <laughs> is there a currency conversion between this? No, because all of this is in a bubble. Okay. It is in a bubble. Okay. I will give you the beer and I will give you the line. You are able to bet from. Five to 50 Hop Nation bucks. Please keep it in increments of five so that I can keep the math (laughs) (laughs) relatively easy. Please and thank you. So is there anybody that would like to go first and put some money up? Not me, because I don't know how to bet lines. So Kelsey. I don't know how to bet lines either, but I'll (laughs) be the guinea pig. Okay. Kelsey, you uh, sounded the most willing, so you get to go first. Yeah, let's do this. Okay. The Christmas Bomb by Prairie. Your ABV line is... 10.5, 10.5. 10.5, 10.5. How many Hop Nation bucks would you like to bet? Five. Five. Would you like to go high? Would you like to go low? Or is it a push? Your line is 10.5. Higher. And you are in the money. Excellent. You are in the money. You now have 55 Hop Nation bucks. Great. Because the actual ABV for the Prairie Christmas Bomb is 13% ABV. <laughs> no, I thought it was 12, but yeah. No, it is yeah. 13. Yeah. Still 12 and a half. Yeah. Yes. And it may be a change as year to year, but mm-hmm. still, it's big. Yeah. So, Steve, you get to go next. Okay. 
Uh, and your beer is the Southern Tier Creme Brulee. Yeah. Why would you give him that? And your line is... <laughs> here's Steve, here's your favorite beer. Good luck <laughs> guessing. <laughs> All right, screw it. Yeah, that, I mean, that really is Fine. unfair because I did just drink it last episode, yeah. too. <laughs> All right, it's, it's not fair. Fine. Katie, your beer is the Southern Tier Creme Brulee. <laughs> screw it. And your line is 8.6% ABV. <laughs> How many Hop Nation bucks would you like to bet? And would you like to go higher, lower, or is it a push? I'm going to say five bucks. Okay. And it's higher. You were saying it's going to be higher than 8.6. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely 100% correct. I know, because I just listened to the episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cheating also. <laughs> but you only bet five bucks. Yeah, because I'm not good and I don't have faith in myself. <laughs> so the actual ABV on that is 10. Yes, 10. that's 10. what I remember 0%. Steve saying. Yes. Yeah. Steve, are you ready that for your like beer? should have been like an example one. Yeah, <laughs> should have. Been. Yeah. When okay, I, good. When I wrote that down, I didn't, I didn't think about giving it to you. I don't know why, <laughs> I did that, but that's okay. All right, your beer is the Couch Raspberry Duvet. Oh, oh I love that. And that your line delicious. is four point eight. Also, beer names. ABV. Beer names with puns is awesome. Yes. Four point eight. I love a good pun. <laughs> Ooh. Is it higher? Is it lower? Ooh, ooh, ooh! I am going to go. You got a wager? Five dollars. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say it's actually lower. So you're saying that the raspberry duvet by Couch is lower than four point eight percent? Yes, because I'm not very confident. But All and right. he wagered. The other half of his hand. I'm sorry. You that's did. incorrect. <laughs> yeah, what the hell, man? $5 again? Yeah. Well, well that's only because I'm not confident. It, had you given me the other one, well, had yeah, I taken you doubled your leg, money. Yeah, I would have yeah. doubled. Bet all 50. <laughs> so you're going lower than 4.8%, and I'm sorry, Steve, but that is wrong. Okay. The actual ABV is... Is it 6.5? 6. 6. 6.6. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's Steve, what I I'm, thought it was, but I wasn't confident. You are down to 45 Hop Nation bucks. Oh, no. You are currently losing. Yay. And just so everybody knows, you can bet more than five. You can have some of my. Steve can have some of my money since he yeah. inadvertently helped with the last one. I'm sorry, that's not how this game works. Why? Because I'm running it. What I what, the chips I pass under the table are none of your because, business. Because he's the bank and he can't keep I don't track see of all. That's right. I don't see cameras, pit boss. Get your thimble off a park place. Don't worry, I have confidence in myself. You guys know there's a millennial edition of uh, Monopoly, but you can't buy property because millennials can't afford it. Oh. Mm-hmm. There's also a woman That's version. A true story. <laughs> that only like women can buy property and stuff. Hmm. hmm. Yeah. Can I live in that country? Sure. Cool. Kelsey, are you ready? Sure. All right. Your next beers are the combination of the Prairie Birthday Bomb. Ooh, it's getting harder. And the Evil Genius sliding into the DMs. The combination of those ABVs. Your line is 17.6. Oh. How many Hop Nation bucks would you like to bet? I'm going to bet 10. All right. Is it higher than 17.6, lower than 17.6, or is it exactly 17.6? I'm going to go with higher. For 10 Hop Nation bucks. Yes. And you are 100% correct. Should be like twenty one. It is nineteen actually. <laughs> Thirteen for the birthday bomb and six for the evil genius sliding into the DMs. I'm going to fail at this. I can That's feel okay. It. We're still. Yeah, I was like, feel okay, it already. Wait, the last birthday bomb was about this much. Mm-hmm. I'll and bomb big. That's right. <laughs> I'll uh, bomb big. <laughs> so Kelsey God, is currently good. winning with sixty five Hop Nation bucks nice. money. I won sixty five dollars on a horse race at the Alameda County Fair when I was thirteen. Thanks. Nice. I did not place that bet legally. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for a non-legal, non-binding bet of Hop Nation bucks? Oh, okay. yeah. Your beers are the North Coast Old Rasputin mm-hmm. and the Stone Zoko Vesa. And your line is a combined 18.3% ABV. Would you like to go higher? Would you like to go lower? And how many Hop Nation bucks would you like to gamble? I'm going to say 10 bucks. Okay. And I'm going to push. You're going to push, and you would be incorrect. I lose. You lost. Is it, is it lower? Yeah. It actually is lower. Yes. Uh, nine for the uh, North Coast Old Rasputin. 
And 8.1 for the stone Zokovesa for mm. a total of 17.1. I thought the stone was higher. Honestly, I did too. I thought it was 10. Nope. Only I eight. thought it was even lower than that. I thought it was like 7.5. Nope. Mm. Yeah. Some of them. Some of them are a little bit lower. Yeah. Not a bad beer, though. I think the more adjuncts they have, they kind of yeah. pull down. It's a real, that's, that's a real dry. Mm-hmm. Oh, but the Mexican like chocolate it's one good. is so good. It's fucking good. good. Steve, are you ready? Uh-huh. Okay. Your beers are the Saga Tuck Neapolitan Milk Stout. Tasty life. And the Saga Tuck Blueberry Maple Stout. Oh, God, I hate that beer. And your line is 12.0. It sounds terrible. I'm going to bet... 30 Hop Nation bucks. Okay. That it's above. And you are incorrect. Ah, now, is it I a push? It is a push. Fuck. <laughs> they are, they, they we both, knew a push was coming. <laughs> they both lock in at 6.0. Hmm. Oh, do they? They do. I, I was th- surprised th- by that, too. I thought the blueberry was 8. Mm-mm. Because I, I knew. The blueberry was lower. Nah. Nope. Oh, that thing is so gross. They're both a half dozen. So with your $30 loss, I'm sorry, Steve, but that takes you down to 15 Hop Nation bucks. Cool. And a friendly reminder, when you are out of money, you are out of money. You have to walk back out. That's cool. I'm sorry. So after two rounds, Steve is in third place with 15 Hop Nation bucks. Katie is in second with 45. And Kelsey leading the pack with 65 Hop Nation bucks. That makes sense. One more round. Are, are you ready? Problem. It's Is not a problem if you keep indicating. winning. <laughs> For this third round, I do want to give a reminder that all of these ABVs were obtained from Untapped. So, Kelsey, are you okay. ready? Uh, sure. Is this the final round? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, Kelsey, yes. your beers are the Dogfish Head Worldwide Stout, mm-hmm. the Dogfish Head Oak Age Vanilla Worldwide Stout, Ooh. And the Dogfish Head Utopius Barrel Age Worldwide Stout. And your line is 46.6. And if you drink all three of those, you will stumble your ass home. Or die. Or, or die. Possibly But die both. happy. What's Naps. the line again, Adam? <laughs> your line is <laughs> <take> nap. <laughs> 46.6. Would you like to go higher? Would you like to go lower? Or would you call it a push? And how many Hop Nation books would you like to place on this? I'm doing some math in my head, so hold on. <laughs> okay. All right. Slash some thinking. <laughs> Three seconds. Don't I've always, push I've me. always wondered. <laughs> Three seconds. Okay. Okay. Five. Okay. Higher. Higher. And you are absolutely correct. Oh, Weak. Put more. That puts you at 70 Weak. Hop Nation bucks. Weak. Final round and you just lob five. Weak. That's right. <laughs> the, uh, the actual. Well, uh, I wasn't sure because of that. The last of the world. I'm not sure where the worldwide stouts start. Still, you could have gone big on your bet. <laughs> right. It's the last round. So uh, according to Untapped, the Worldwide Stout clocks in at about 18. Oh. The Oak Age Vanilla Worldwide Stout comes in at 17.5. Mm-hmm. And the Utopius Barrel Age Worldwide Stout, 17.3. So I clocked them all mentally as like around 15. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, well, that's like a little lower. So like I just didn't want to. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I get yeah, because I mean, they do say it's like between 15 and 20, depending yeah. on how you age them. But and, and that's why I put that disclaimer out there. Yeah. Because I knew there was going to be some pushback. It was right. a cautious bet. I know, but don't cautious bet. Who's the bet guy on the at home room? listening to this with nothing better to do than to fact check Adam on the <laughs> <laughs> Nerd. Okay, you know what? Fair, fair. If that's what you chose to do in place of going to Thank your you. in laws on Thanksgiving and arguing right. with drunk uncle about electoral votes, like, okay, fine. Please feel free to text and, and Twitter and email us about Adam's math. Thank if you. Th- if that's what you got to do. Thank you very much. Do you? Katie, are you ready for yours? Probably not. Well, too bad. You're going to get it anyway. Oh, wait, I have to pay attention. All right. All right. <clears throat> you got this, girl. Your, your beers are the Epic Big Bad Baptist, the Epic. Big Bad Batista, and the epic quintuple barrel Big Bad Baptist. And your line is... I've never even physically seen any of these beers. <laughs> I have no idea what well, these you've are. never had any of those? No. Neither have I. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. I, I find I that very surprising. Yeah. Oh, they're very good. Yeah. yeah. Would recommend. If the triple seen. barrel was on tap at uh, Pat's for a while. I don't do barrel. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> barrel age is not my jam. All right. Tastes like coconut. Well, you are. Uh, That's you a reason I wouldn't drink uh, it. All right. I, I don't love do coconut. coconut. But your line is 34.8. Sounds great. Um, would you like to go high? Would you like to go low? Or would you call it a push? Just a friendly reminder you currently have 45 Hop Nation bucks. Bet them all. Going in. Tell me the beers again. 
interesting. It is the epic Big Bad Baptist, mm-hmm. the epic Quintuple Barrel Big Bad Baptist, and the epic Big Bad Baptista. Your line is 34.8. You are putting 45 Hop Nation bucks on the line. You're going high. You're going low. You're going push. Push. You're going push. That is absolutely 100% correct. Nice job. That puts you in the lead with 90 Hop Nation bucks. I was going off the names. I'm like, okay, if that one's barreled age, it's probably going to be at least 12. <laughs> yeah, they're all about 11 or so. <laughs> there was only one that was above 12. And that is the, ironically enough, the original, the Big Bad Baptist. Mm-hmm. Huh. The quintuple barrel came in at 11, and the Baptista, 11.7. The barrel's less than the original? I, I'm, I'm Fact just, checked. <laughs> I think, well, I mean, I think they're all barreled. Oh. But the quintuple is just like five barrels or mm-hmm. something, or five adjuncts or something. Possibly, I don't know. Because like there's a triple barrel, there's a quadruple barrel, and then there's a quintuple barrel, but they all have different flavor profiles. Steve, it is your turn. Yeah. To try to get back in this game. Yeah. Your beers are. I can't win, but I know. Thanks. <laughs> well, I, we haven't okay. we haven't gotten to the bonus round yet. Can oh, there's a bonus round. Of course, there's a bonus oh, round. Glad I bet it all. <laughs> That's right. The High Wire 10W40. Uh huh. The New Holland Dragon's Milk, and Guinness. Okay. Of What's course, of course, line? you're gonna get Guinness, and your line is 21.9. You have 15 Hop Nation bucks left. How High many? Wire, mm-hmm. Dragon's Milk. Mm-hmm. What was the line? Your line is 21.9. Okay. Uh, bet it all. Okay. And no, you know what? Bet 20. You can't. Shut up. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Shut up and let me bet 20, you jerk. Oh, wait. No, wait. You don't have 20. No, no. That's right. Uh, let me bet 14. <laughs> you know what? All right. That's fine. I'll, I'll, yes. The math works. Yeah. Let me bet 14. Okay. Uh, 14 and it's higher. That is correct. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So that puts you at 29. Just in case. Yeah. Just in case. Because I know high wire is almost always 10. Yeah. Wrong. Dragon, or is it 9? 8. 8. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Because my original plan was to have three high wires, three yeah. high wire 10W40s. But they're all, they're they would, all 8%, yeah. at least listed on, on Untapped. They're okay. all listed as 8. Okay, so yeah, they're all 8. Dragon's Milk is 10. 11. Yeah. yeah. Well, in my mind, Fair. how I was doing Fair. it. Fair, yeah. And then I know Guinness is 4-3, so. 4-2. It's 4-3. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's 4-3. I'm telling you that one. <laughs> per the numbers that I was given. Per untapped. Yes. So, untapped can eat my butt on that one. It's 4-3. That's <laughs> fine. That's fine. I, I will send them a message. Dear untapped, please, Steve, please eat Steve's butt. <laughs> <laughs> if cell phone apps can start eating butts, I'm leaving Earth. <laughs> That's too much. No, it's time to invest. Are you kidding yeah. me? Listen, I'm not ready for Skynet. <laughs> I'm not there yet. So, Steve, you have 29 Hop yeah. Nation bucks. Yes. Kelsey, you have 70 Hop Nation bucks. Katie, you have 90. Go me. Would you like to play a bonus round? Wait, am I winning right now? You are. Then of I course we won. I never win. <laughs> Let me have this. Well, too bad. Damn it. Well, could have just led with, hey, this is rhetorical, but... <laughs> <laughs> you get a bonus round. Do you want to play this you round you're about to play regardless of how you round. feel about it? You get a bonus round. You get a bonus round. You, you get, get a bonus, bonus round. round. You all get bonus rounds. Bonus rounds. Yes. So, you know what? We'll just play it for funsies. Katie, you won. Yay! Fuck yeah. <sighs> I never won. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, we could play a bonus round no. just for second place. If that'll make you feel better. No. no. Let's do the okay. bonus round. Let's do the thing. Okay. You have three beers. Okay, for funsies. For funsies. Nice job, Kate. Usually that's why I have three beers. Yes. Uh, first part is give me the line, and then the second part, we'll get to that. The three beers are the Founder's Breakfast Stout, the Lagunitas Cappuccino Stout. Ugh, it's the only beer from Lagunitas that I like. <laughs> and the Sockety Creek X Reserve Imperial Coffee Stout. Oh, fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everything he just named is from the first episode of the podcast. Shit. <laughs> that doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. It no, just it means because that was the second part of the bonus question. Oh. 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 Well, I get that point. <laughs> so Steve gets second place, apparently. You're not going <laughs> to. 
the fuck? You're not going to sneak that past me. Are you kidding me? I, I didn't know that. He can't yeah. recall any beer from any episode. I don't say that because now you're, not, you're okay. I'm good at it. I'm going to say over 90%. Yeah, I'm good yeah. at it. I can tell you if we've had a beer for yeah, sure. I had no idea those were the first three beers. Because there was something on the yeah. last episode where you're like, Adam, you had no that idea those were the first three beers? No, it was three years ago. But I mean, you don't, <laughs> uh, you just picked all of those? Well, no, I specifically went back to the first. I was going to see oh. the first three stouts that we had on the show. Oh. And when I went back to episode one, that was like, oh, all three yeah. of these were stouts. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, that was the first three beers because we did beer for breakfast. That was no, episode I fully, one. I understand yeah. that. I didn't realize all three of them were stouts. I'm mm-hmm. off all week. Mm-hmm. It's beer for mm-hmm. breakfast. I figured at least one of them had to be a porter or something like that. I have nope. an eye appointment tomorrow. That would not go well. No, that would not go well. <laughs> You're reading your eye chart. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see the third one again. So do you still want to try for us to figure out what the what those would add up to? Sure. Why not? Teamwork. Let's do it together. Teamwork. Since Steve already add the three of them up. Did the thing. What is the grand total ABV? I feel like the Saucony Creek was like a 6.5. Okay. And the Cappuccino was a 7 or 7.5. And then what is the Founders? That's got to be between 8 and 9.5. And but I don't, I, it, I don't I recall. I feel like the Cappuccino is higher. I feel like the Cappuccino is higher. Yeah. It might be 10. I don't know. But. And I feel you're... In the ballpark for the founders. Yeah. I'm seeing 8.5 for founders in my head. I've got a number. If you guys just want to throw out your own guesses and we'll see who's closest. Let's do that. All right. All right. So give me the three again. Yeah. Your three beers are the Founders Breakfast Stout, mm-hmm. the Lagunitas Cappuccino Stout, mm-hmm. and the Socrates Creek X Reserve Imperial Coffee Stout. What is the combined ABV? Steve, you have an idea. I can't do math. I do. In my head. Okay. I, I'm going to say 22 and a half. Okay. That's going to be my number to lock in. Katie, do you have a number? No, I'm trying to do math and it's hard. Casey. <laughs> Casey is both of us. <laughs> I know. We're getting four of them. Uh, you guys can talk it out. Kelsey, do you have a number? Actually, let's do this. Yeah. yeah. No, hold on to the yeah. Casey thing. Yeah. yeah I know. Okay. I'm, I'm not, okay, let's no, talk no, through no, this. You do your number. Okay. My number is like 27 and a half. You're saying 27 and a half? Yeah. Okay. So... I'm going to say 25.5. All right. Hold on. Plus 27 and a half divided by two. Are you trying to combine the two and take the average? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. K- Casey half. has an answer. Casey has an answer. Casey would be 26 and a half. Yeah. Okay. That's what the difference. And that's Casey's yeah. answer. And you are all wrong. All right. Great. Did Casey win? No. Damn it. Actually, Kelsey won. <laughs> oh. Yay. Yay. So Kelsey ended up winning anyways. Is the cappuccino like 10? It's 9.3. Okay. Mm, yes. I did 10. The grand total of the ABVs is 28.1. Oh. Oh. Yes. oh. Okay. Give me the three of them. The founder's breakfast stout mm-hmm. was 8.3. Yeah. I did 8.5. I did 8.5. Lagunitas so. was 9.3. Uh, I lowballed that at 7.5. Yeah, there oh, you I go. Went up on me that. too. And the Sockety Creek was 9.5. Oh, really? And I did 10 on that yeah. one. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right. So that, mid- that middle there. one got me. Yeah. So there you go. And that's how you play. Draft Kings. It's a little concerning Draft how Kings. close we are, though. Draft yeah, Kings. Yeah, that actually Draft is. <laughs> we might have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> or we're good at picking out keywords and phrases within mm-hmm. names and styles of beer that we can associate mm-hmm. with ones that we know. Yeah, whatever's going to help you sleep. Not me, because apparently, <laughs> as for many stouts as I drink, I don't remember any of these fucking numbers. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> so maybe we need to just look out for the Hop Nation USA betting app coming in 2021. Neat. <laughs> we'll take 15% right off the top. And I'm still not going to use it because I'm bad at betting. You guys get you guys get to bet how many beers I drink in a year. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to know the answer to that. I don't even. Yeah. I just turned in all my four pack folders, and I'm just like, <laughs> I had a Mad Max takeout bag. Yeah, dang girl, stacked. not just like haphazardly and like stacked, full. Yeah. <laughs> I. Oh, wow. Nice. I'm impressed. And I don't even know that's. Is that just this year? It's definitely just this year, and it's not all of this year. But, I mean, how many of those did you share with your husband and share with other people? Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. You didn't necessarily drink all of them, but you drank most of them. To be honest, not that many went to Harold, um, and probably it was 50-50 with Chris and I. There you go. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, you got a lot of things, but you didn't. And some may have come here. Mm -hmm. And, And speaking of beers that we have had amongst friends... 
What do we think about this? Resting my greatness, my short shift. It's a beer. Out of the Constitution State? <laughs> I don't know. I think that's I think that's what Connecticut is, the Constitution State. Out of the headquarters of WWE. That's right, Stanford. <laughs> what do you guys think? I think it's a beer. It is a good beer. I didn't say that. She didn't say she that. Just she said, said it's a beer. It's a beer. <laughs> she no. said it's a beer. She thinks it's a beer. I think it's pretty good. I think it's a pretty good beer. I like it. You get a lot on the back end of there this beer. Is, there's, there's a lot going on, that's I for sure. I just didn't get it. It's like it's overwhelming. Like it, it's okay. Like it's good. And then all of a sudden like that comes. For me, like, no. there was some, something was inhibiting the mapleness. Hmm. Like the know. mapleness wanted to be there, but something was on top of it. Yeah. That licorice. <laughs> and I can't even say it was licorice because black licorice makes me wish I would die. And it wasn't. It wasn't that drastic. It wasn't like, oh my god, this is the worst thing I've ever had. It was just I, I wanted that maple. And to, in all fairness, I've been drinking a shit ton of waffle sauce. <laughs> 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 so I'm used to maple hitting very heavy, lately. Um, I haven't had the waffles. You this. need to. Yeah. It's pretty Somebody decent. Somebody bought yeah. the last four pack in the Pittsburgh area. Someone's a terrible person. Dear Rusty Rail. <laughs> Somebody Randy also was... killed Hitchhiker's supply of Oreo Speedwagon on draft yesterday. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 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 All makes sense now. Yeah, it's all, yeah. all coming together mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. I didn't say I drank them all. Come mm-hmm. to Katie's house. <laughs> Drop off a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a turkey for the deep freeze. But before we get there, I think we need to rank these bad boys. Ugh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Who mm-hmm. has a ranking ready to go? I can do it. All right. Katie's Katie, Katie, have at it. You've got the con. Um, my biggest thing here is just gonna go uh, tr- true, true to true to what it says. Basically, um, Pipeworks Imperial Hyper Dog is is it for number one because um, it did have the chocolate to it, but it was definitely the cacao nibs. It wasn't a strong sweet chocolate. It was like the more bitter uh, chocolate, which I really enjoy. Uh, the vanilla was a, a little bit, and the coffee was very strong. I didn't get any lactose, but I'm not holding that against them because that was probably added more for, um, like, the smoothness of it more than the flavor. Uh, but, yeah, I this was on point. If you're a cold brew coffee fan, that is your jam. Number two for me is going to be – I'm going backwards. You are. I am. Yeah. I just thought about that. It's okay. That's all right. You're an innovator. Anyway, okay, so gold was Pipeworks. Yeah. Silver is Hop and Frog, peanut butter, hazelnut, caramel, chocolate, cake stout. And the biggest things for me is because I wasn't getting a lot of uh, the peanut butter on that. And more than anything, the hazelnut really came through with a little bit of chocolate and uh, caramel on the nose. But that beer hit on the um, hit on the nose, I guess, more so than the actual taste for me. Uh, it smelled incredible. It tasted good, not outstanding. Um, if it tasted the way that it smells, I, that would just be my top regardless of all else. And then resting my greatness just left something to be desired for me. There was some weird taste in there that I think was burying the maple syrup. It kind of wanted to come through. I don't know what it was. It wasn't a bad stout. Um, none of these were bad by any means. I just got a nitpick here because they were all good. And so that's, that's what I got. Okie dokie. I can go. Please do. I s- differ a little bit from Katie in that I would put the Hop and Frog, all the things, cakes out. <laughs> <laughs> I would put that bronze. It smells better than it tastes. And like Katie, I didn't get a lot of peanut butter on the taste. And just that little bit of acridness that you, I was associating with the hazelnut, but yeah, it just that little bit made it not as enjoyable as a drinking experience. Like, I don't think I would ever drink more than one of these in a session. So, the bronze. I'm going to put the, the short throw, resting my greatness in silver. It tastes better than it smells, which is the opposite of the hop and frog. <laughs> But there's still kind of like that, that weird licorishness that I wish I knew more of where it was coming from, what was inducing that. I don't even know if like that's a flaw in beer because I haven't taken Cicerone classes. Cicerone. <laughs> Cicerone. 
<laughs> the one good thing from that show. <laughs> I'll let that go. There were two <laughs> good things. I want that dog. One of the two good things out of that <laughs> show. <laughs> Friar Lucas is a good boy, and he didn't deserve all the things that happened to him. Absolutely correct. <laughs> that dog was awesome. Uh, but yeah, I just don't know where that licoriceness is coming from, but I don't completely love licorice either. So it, it was tolerable, more tolerable than the cake stout. So silver pipe works, so, though. Uh, that's pretty much an A plus stout. Mm hmm. That is mm-hmm. all kinds of good. You can't tell that it's 10%. You get a whole lot of coffee on it. It's not overly sweet. I can't wait to drink more Pipeworks. Good thing they started coming to Pittsburgh. Yeah. <laughs> Gold. Kelsey, what do you got in mind? My podium is the same as Steve's podium. Uh. The Hobbin Frogs at the bottom, it's just too much. Too many words on this. It just didn't deliver on half of them. And it was super accurate at the end. I don't know if it's the hazelnut. I don't know if it's the peanut butter trying to come through. It just didn't. It didn't have a good aftertaste. Um, This resting my greatness is the silver. It's not bad. I just, I wanted a little more syrup. I'm with Katie on that one. Um, But this pipe works. I could drink all day. All day. Right on. It's delicious. Well, until you get hammered. Great so, day over. Great <laughs> day over. Then. So like two to three of them. Yeah, yeah I can hey, about. The nice thing is days are shorter. That's yes, true. Exactly. That is very true. So We're when it gets dark nice at four thing. o'clock, I'm like, oh, happy hour starts early. Great. And then it's like, oh, bedtime by eight. Nice. Like, let- so you do happy hour based on sun position. No, I usually do happy hour based on when I get home sometimes, but sometimes happy hour doesn't start till like nine or ten at night. That's a nightcap. That well, that's a honestly a big glass of wine, and mm. <laughs> nice. we'll go from there. <clears throat> I don't. So for me, I I think I got to put the hop and frog in a bronze medal position as well. I, none of them are bad. I I if somebody handed me another can of any of these beers, I would gladly crack it open and enjoy it. Uh, so to say that a beer is in the bronze medal position is not really saying much right uh but i i do kind of agree that the aftertaste had a little bit of the uh the nutty acridity that we had talked about i don't know if acridity is a word it is sure. now uh but that i think that that little part is what kind of pulled it back just a little bit uh silver i think i'm gonna go pipeworks what i think i'm gonna go pipeworks all right yeah okay well. Okay, I, I let's liked hear it. Why. I mean, I, that's yeah. right. It's my opinion. It's your well, opinion. Let's hear why. Might Damn have the it. right opinion, but like it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. I would absolutely drink it again. But ah, uh, I like licorice, so I kind of liked what was going on with the short throw. It's not supposed to taste like. I don't care if it's supposed to or not supposed to. It kind of <laughs> did, and I kind of liked it. I was, All right. no, I was, I'm happy for you. I was kind of into it. I'm happy for you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's not often that you find, like, a beer with star anise in it. That's the only thing I could think of mm-hmm. as an adjunct oh. that would get added, that would add a licorice flavor is star anise. Yeah, but I liked it. I thought I thought it complemented the rest of the beer pretty well. Turns out maybe I need to stir my coffee in the morning with black licorice. Cool. <laughs> I'm Yuck. learning something new today. <laughs> Did you learn a lot about yourself today through this yeah. beer? Yeah. Did you go on a journey with us? A little bit. Okay. Little bit. Self discovery. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, felt good. All right. Felt well. real good. So yeah, short throw. Uh, they're going in the gold medal position. Cool. There you go. I bet that makes them feel good. It does. It's their first time on the show and they won a gold medal. Mm-hmm. Yes. But same for Pipeworks. <laughs> also true. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for coming to Stout's Giving. Mm-hmm. Stout's Giving was delicious this year. It's a good it idea. It really was. It's a good idea. We do Stout's Giving every year. Yes. And we will. Yay. Yes. It's what we'll just start doing. Because nobody wants to be with their families. And nobody wants, <laughs> to, nobody wants to talk about the history of America. Let's just change it to something else. Look, November 5th is already International Stout Day. Yeah. And so yeah. let's just... Let's just keep it make, going. Let's just make it the like twenty fifth, like or twenty seventh. Just move it. Mm-hmm. Move it to Thanksgiving. We'll change it to Stout Giving. Move it to the last Thursday of the month. Yeah, like, let's just fine. do it. Yeah. It's fine to move it. Like they they've already claimed February as Stout Month, and I'm okay keeping it that way because then that gives us two ways to celebrate Stouts. Right. I'm down for that. <laughs> I love that Stout Month is like just 
the day, it starts the day after my birthday because usually all the stouts are on draft and it's yes. like a preview night. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The Corner Pub. Shout out to them. Mm-hmm. Oh, I Hopefully guess the they're corner. doing well. I hope so or too. coming back. Yeah. I grew up in that bar. I love that it's bar. good bar. <laughs> They used to have food. Yeah. Well, you grew, never, you grew up. I used to have deli sandwiches yeah. in the back. <laughs> you grew up in that bar when it was different. Now it's <laughs> something. <Yeah. laughs> now it's full of craft beer and darts. And <laughs> My dad's cool. friend uh, had passed away and there was a wake there. And then my dad's other friend stole the ashes. It was a thing. Hmm. Oh, okay. Well, it's actually, it was, a, it was an entertaining story. I like that nice. when they replaced the carpet, they replaced it with something that was very similar to what had been in there. A very dark red plaid yeah. carpet. Mm. Yeah, keeping the the original charm. I like it. But shout out to the corner. We yeah. miss you. Hopefully we'll they're do. doing well, and in February they can come back strong with their stout features because they do that yeah. a lot. In the meantime, though, if you want to find us on social media, all you have to do is search Hop Nation USA, and that'll get you Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We're on all of those on varying capacities. Are we gonna do TikTok next? No, no. <laughs> never reach the other generations. I mean, you can do TikTok. I'll. If you want to set up a Hop Nation USA TikTok account, you go right ahead and do it. You can do it. Nobody I'm not, else. <laughs> I'm not here enough for us to have the content for it. I don't care. I, you can put nothing on there. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're not doing, though, is putting my ugly ass. <laughs> <laughs> or the rest of them. <laughs> right. We're not putting me on there. Anybody else want to do it? Fine. As long as you're part of the show and I okay it. <laughs> if for some reason Bubba is listening and he decides he wants to do TikTok. He won't. I know he won't, uh, but it's out there for him. I will, I will speak for him on that yeah. one. Bubba's he child won't. is still a very fresh human. Bubba's probably pretty busy. Sure, but he could have fresh TikTok content. <laughs> People videos babies. of the baby with the yeah. podcast playing over time. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, just put Ooh the podcast, boy. put links to it, and that's all I care about. I like it. <laughs> But yeah, uh, if you want to listen to brand new episodes of the Hop Nation USA podcast every Friday, as you should, then again, search Hop Nation USA in your favorite podcatcher like Spotify, Amazon, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. We're on everything. We're on all the platforms everywhere, ever, forever. <laughs> and if you're on all of those platforms, leave a five-star review because... We are a six-stout show, but they only let us use five. Nailed it. Yes. Nice. Yes. That's it's a bigger a good, crime. Nope. Then. Nope. Nope. Okay. No crimes this week. No, no crimes. It's a bigger crime we're, than putting licorice in a beer. <laughs> I say we already took care of crimes in segment one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big crimes in segment one. No crimes this week. It's nope. Stouts giving and we're having a good time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yes, uh, join us next week. We'll have something new and then something new after that. That's the way it works. Yep. Keeps on going. If you want to be a guest, email us, hopnationusa at gmail.com. Oh. And if you made it all the way to this part of the episode, all the way to the end, Mm -hmm. we don't have it for sure finalized, but we got a glass coming. Yes, we do. (gasps) Worldwide announcement right there. Big news, big news. Breaking news. If you made it to the very end. Yes. And if you did, thank you for that. That means you're a true, (laughs) actual fan. True fans. Kelsey, we're fans. We're fans. (laughs) We made it. Ian's was here the whole time. Yeah, you're here. You didn't have a choice. <laughs> you didn't specify how you got to the end, just that you did. Yeah, okay, and well. Katie and I made it to the very end. You, you did. did. So yeah. congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. You you're probably the only nerd that's listened to every single episode, <laughs> to be honest. So I actually have a friend of mine. Shout out to Greg, who Hi, discovered Greg. he discovered the uh, the podcast a little late. Uh, we're friends from long ago. And he decided to start from episode one. Oh, that's what I did. And so he is up to about episode 58. Oh, good for him. Nice. So he's got 130 to go. Yeah. yeah. So, Greg, when you get to 181, <laughs> hey. Guess what? We hey. have a glass. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. Yeah. I probably like 70% of the episodes. You've listened to more than I have. Uh, yeah. I don't Adam has experienced them I'm all. Here. Yes. Yeah. I've been here for all of them. Yes. Except the one. Uh, he's got like a handful that he's missed. I think I think I'm at 95 percent plus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. depends it. depends on which non-canon garbage you count. To. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But yes, uh, thank you everybody for listening. Yes, I think that's all we got for this week. Yep. Uh, enjoy your stouts giving. Yep. Drink yep. safe. Drink fresh. Drink responsibly and recycle. Hope Be- you had a nice Thanksgiving. Be thankful for beer. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm thankful for all of you. All right. Aww. Aww. I'm Bye. thankful for stouts. Yes. yes. <laughs> and stouts. Later, my dudes and dudettes. Bye. Thank you.